beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so how can god give such a prophetic word to a little child who just complained that his major problem was his inadequacy God acted as if he did not know the boy was talking about the limitation that his age had created for him. He said, see, listen, I have said this day, I have said, uh, I have this day said thee over the nations, over the kingdoms, to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build and to plant. That is the prophetic word. This is what I want to do with your life. This is how far I want to do business with you. Verse 11, moreover, in continuation, it says, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Jeremiah, this is what I want to do with your life, but what is your perception? It says, what sees thou? I have shown you what I see about your life. But what do you see? And then Jeremiah said, I see the rod of an almond tree. Then the next verse. He says, Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast what? Well seen. Please give us any other version. NIV, any other version. He says, Thou hast well seen. There's a version that says, Thou hast seen correctly. I don't know exactly which of them but just just give us any other version that has a different rendition NIV says you have seen what you have seen Jeremiah this is your prophetic destiny regardless of your age and your background regardless of your limitations I have set you when he said this day not when you grow up in my mind this day I have set you over nations to root out, pull down, uproot, build. But then he says, the only limitation to this prophecy coming to pass now is what you can see. And then he says, what seest thou? He says, I see the rod of an almond tree. And then he says, you have seen correctly. On the strength of your correctness, you have authorized me to watch to see that my word which you have seen and agreed with me must come to pass it says for i am watching to see that my word is fulfilled please give us amplified amplified says for i am alert and active watching over my word to perform right he says, I am alert and active, watching over my word. Hallelujah. He starts by revealing to Jeremiah his prophetic destiny in Christ. Jeremiah begins to lament. Theologically speaking, Jeremiah is called the weeping prophet. 
the nature and the character of the anointing upon his life was such that he was always raising a lamentation and that anointing altered his form to respond to the kind of message that he would communicate it was a reflection of the burden that was upon him so oftentimes you would hear him weeping as he communicated his thoughts from god so jeremiah as a little boy was being shown a great destiny who at that time never believed that it would come to pass and he began to complain the same complaint happened with moses in exodus chapter 3 don't turn there the bible says when god saw that he turned aside right to see the great side he said moses take off your shoes for where you stand is holy ground are we together now after he showed moses everything moses started complaining and said but lord you know i'm a stammerer and then his own belief grieved the heart of god and god spoke fiercely to him he said who created the mouth if i can show you i can turn your rod to a serpent if i can cause fire in a bush yet not burned what does it take to heal you of stammering it says because you have limited me i will use you to the degree you believe me but since the issue of speaking you did not believe me i will raise aaron to be a spokesman it was never god's intention for aaron to be moses spokesman he was supposed to be healthy and healed are we together his limitation affected the dimension to which god could find expression in him please pay attention to this you see every time god calls a man god does not just begin to use the man because he's called because oftentimes the vessel that god calls is either an unbeliever or having all kinds of thinkings and paradigms that are not consistent with god you see that happened to all the patriarchs abraham for a long time when god began to speak to him about his child coming abraham for a long time listen he tried to agree but the reality of his supposed impotency and sarah's barrenness to a point where sarah laughed she laughed when the angel spoke and said she would be the mother of nations god could not do so much with abraham until one time god told abraham come out when he came out he said try to count the stars abraham tried and tried and tried and finally he couldn't count it he says so shall thy seed be and then the bible says finally abraham believed god he agreed with god oh now i understand what you are trying to tell me and then the bible says it was credited reckoned unto him for righteousness it is not just enough to know that god is mighty please listen the dynamics of impact the dynamics of doing great things for the kingdom does not just lie on the recognition that god is mighty as great and mighty as god is if that is the scope of your revelation about him um, you will be blessed it will impart reverence and awe but you will not be able to do much the idea of his revealing his might to you is so that it can get you to a point where you are convinced about anything he wants to do in and through your life so that the revelation of his might will swallow away what you may hold to be limitations in your life here he meets jeremiah and says jeremiah i want to do business with you and jeremiah comes as a young boy he says lord i've heard about you doing great things with people and prophets now you are telling me i'm a prophet but i'm limited my background my ideologies are limiting me and god began to challenge his perception the series that we've been taking on the secrets of the kingdom are an attempt to reveal the working principles of the kingdom i call them secrets or mysteries the very laws upon which impact in the kingdom is founded 
your ability to understand this thing and agree with God becomes your key to an enviable life of impact. Your inability to understand will limit God greatly in your life. So please pay attention. You see, it is the word of God that transforms. But I've shared it again and I'll keep drumming it until it becomes a persuasion. There is a system through which the word transforms people. The word does not transform people just by entering them and doing something magical. No, that's not how the word works. Write this word down, word, W-O-R-D. Is the Greek word logos. And that word logos, it does not just mean the speakings of a man. Right? The, the root word that is translated logos is the word thoughts. Please write it down. Thoughts. Like thinking. Thoughts. Is the word idea. Write it down. Is the word opinion. opinion is the word paradigm paradigm and it is also the word mindset so when we say the word of god we are not just saying the things god is saying no we are saying the the understandings that construct his mind are you following me now when we say the word of God transforms, that word, word is not just the speakings of God, like his communication from his mouth to you. It means his ideas. It means his ideology. It means God's opinion about everything. Let me tell you how we are changed. When your life consistently keeps realigning to God's own idea about everything, are we together? So you find out what God's perspective is about divine health and about the reality of you staying healthy. And you compare that to your current state. They tell you you have SS. They tell you you have all kinds of sicknesses that destroy you. But you find out his word is a compendium of his perspective about you. And so he tells you by his stripes, I am healed. I have been healed. If the spirit that raised Christ from the dead, right, dwells in your mortal body, the Bible says that same spirit will revitalize. Now, that's his opinion. You can be aware of it and still remain sick. Or you can choose to subscribe to that new ideology and watch the word of God come to pass in your life. You see, God is alert ensuring that all those who truly believe his word live with a testimony it may take a while brothers and sisters but as surely as you correctly believe God give him time there must be a performance in your life say amen I am amazed at how many believers think their lives will change just because they are born again. I am more amazed at the preachers that teach Christians every week that all it takes to triumphant success in the kingdom is just to surrender your heart to the Lord and go to bed. That looks very spiritual. It is very evangelical, but it's not the accurate presentation of God's thoughts as far as our success is concerned. Something in that equation is missing. And this is why people get born again. And they say, I'm born again. I'm a believer. Why are things not changing in my life? Everything I used to suffer before, I'm still suffering them after. And I'll tell you why. Because you see, you receive salvation through faith, an act of God's grace. 
but there is a partnership with you to activate the realities the bible says that we draw out of the wells of salvation everybody say wells not just one salvation as a package is broken down into different systems of possibilities your finances your health your life the operation of the spirit in your life your spiritual growth it is now left for you through the ministry of the holy spirit to walk with the word of god and change your mindset please hear me i am i am a firm believer that a believer who has refused renewal will experience the exact same thing with an unbeliever the only difference is the security of his eternal salvation but as far as the earth is concerned there will be no absolutely no difference as far as kingdom exploit is concerned are we together nicodemus came to jesus by night in john chapter 3 and he says rabbi we know that you are a man sent from god he said for no man can do these things except god be with him and then jesus responds to nicodemus in verse 3 of john 3 he says verily verily i say unto you he said except a man be born again he said he shall not he cannot see the kingdom he uses the word see the kingdom are we together verse 3 verse 4 nicodemus responds and says, ah, how can a man now be born again when he is old will he enter a second time into his mother's womb then jesus explains his concept verse 5 he says verily verily i say unto you except a man be born of water and the spirit then he switches terminologies he said he shall not enter it's one thing to see the kingdom but it's another thing to enter the experience of the kingdom i call it prophetic realities and experiential manifestations it is one thing to hold the prophetic word of god it is another thing to enter the experience of it between thus saith the lord and it came to pass is a process that process is your degree of alignment please listen to what i'm teaching you this will hold the key out of every life of pain and shame and mediocrity hallelujah do you believe what i'm sharing with you today? I watch people very innocently, well-meaning people live under the expectations of God and they are not doing anything about it. Some are waiting for God to do something about it. So you hear people call and say, man of God, I don't know what is happening in my life. I serve the Lord, I go to church, but nothing is happening. And the biggest area largely is the area of finances. Nothing is changing. Is God so wicked? No, he's not. There are systems in the kingdom. Everybody says systems. It is for this reason that he gave unto some apostles. Listen. He gave unto some prophets. He gave unto some evangelists and pastors and teachers. Why? For the equipping, maturing, perfecting, building up of the saints. So that the saints will not keep misunderstanding him. God wants to be understood. There is something about the thinking of God that men do not understand. And so he anointed certain people and said, explain to people that I'm not the reason why their lives are that way. There is an understanding they do not have. Listen, he anointed some. He didn't anoint them to be noisemakers. He didn't anoint them to be offering razors. He didn't anoint them to just be jeep drivers. He anointed them for the maturing. If you are in the fivefold ministry and you are not contributing to demystifying the kingdom, you are wasting God's time on earth. The role of the fivefold ministry is to present the kingdom, make it clear, let the inhabitants, believers, understand. By the time they see the spiritual logic to God's system, they will now say, ah, I see. It's not that God is wicked. I never knew 
that there is a system like this i never knew that godliness with contentment is great gain i never knew that my not tithing is what is authorizing the devourer i have prayed i never knew that as powerful as prayer is is not the only key to opening doors in the kingdom so the fivefold ministry by grace it's not just about their spiritual life there is an anointing that comes upon them and gives them an advantage a superior working of the spirit in their life gives them uncommon understanding to the working knowledge of the kingdom to the end that they will now call believers and say guys i found it i think i've seen the reason why you are not anointed ah uh, it's not just about prayer and fasting your motif and then the person says really i i came from a background that is not so good and um i'm naturally inclined to wanting power and wanting a, a sense of self-worth and you say no i've studied the kingdom and i found out that once your motive is to glorify yourself you cannot have the anointing are you seeing now the fivefold ministry you have edified that person so he goes back in prayer scans his motive and say lord i change my eye my mindset i change my understanding it's no longer about being a celebrity it's about seeing your kingdom come at once he satisfies the condition for the power of god that same person will have a dramatic encounter and go for a meeting and suddenly begin to see the power of god because someone adjusted his mindset what you are receiving and what you receive every week it's not just impartations it's not just encounters but you are receiving realignments the answers to your questions are being dispensed are we together now to the end that you will now find out why certain things may not be working in your life now it's up to you to be malleable enough and say lord i am the porter I i'm the clay you are the porter mold me to whatever form you can argue and say no i don't agree with this and then continue suffering or you can say look i have i have found the truth and i will adjust i like i like um what's his name that short guy the tax collector zacchaeus when he climbed the tree he was a wicked man he defrauded people because of his office as a tax collector but his motive was sincere now he climbed the tree i know why he was a wicked man because of his size he probably felt that they were looking down on him and so he had to amass wealth to cover for something so the issue was not finances the issue was trying to cover for inferiority are we together and he climbed the tree to see jesus and jesus said don't climb it's your house i'm going to jesus meets the man and at once he corrects Zacchaeus mentality he says I didn't come to your house because you are rich I didn't come to your house because you are tall in other words it's not about those things it's about my love and my grace you did not qualify but I came to your house and Zacchaeus said that means there's no need defrauding people at once he changed his mindset are we together now he started returning everything and said ah, my amassing money was not because I like money I was hoping that through it I will look like royalty so that every celebrity will visit my house now jesus has abused my mentality and he says there's no need for that old thinking we must be like zacchaeus tonight opening up our hearts and the moment the word of god comes you don't argue with it you see only foolish people argue with the word of god especially when you are not getting results in your life we live in a generation where people are confident to talk about things they know nothing about are we together someone who doesn't play football you see him arguing for three hours he says i know how much how we pay them this amount meaning his team and he never contributed anything and he never wonders and say come why is my life not working like the person i'm talking about people argue all around why should doctors go on strike and the person is not even he's not near medicine he doesn't know anything we like talking boldly about things we know nothing about and that's the danger we keep venting our ignorance but when we come to god he requires that we become silent 
That's what Mary did. Martha was busy about commanding and talking and Jesus said, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things. You are trying to get things done, but one thing is needful. And this Mary has chosen to do what? To sit at the feet. There's something about being still in God's presence. When he was about to feed the 5,000, he said, let them sit down. If you can't sit down, there's no bread for you. Sitting down is a sign of stability. He makes me lie down in green pastures oh but joshua selma you i have bills to pay tomorrow sit down in green pastures your running around is not the solution let me tell you something when we go through things we think god is disturbed the way we are disturbed and we say god keep responding on the go and god says i'm not going to talk to you prove you trust me by sitting down in five minutes that sickness you are trying to rush and call a doctor outside and god is saying just sit down I can address this issue. You can't even raise 3.5 million to go to India. So why don't you sit down and give me time and walk out of this meeting here? I believe the word of God. I believe the word of God. I respect the word of God. I will never argue with his perspectives. I'm not too proud to admit I am wrong. No, 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 no. no. Once the word of God challenges my ideologies, I say, Lord, I agree with you. You cannot be wrong. So I'm the one who is wrong here. Anyone who has that kind of spirit is on his way to an enviable destiny. Do you know how long it takes the average believer to adjust to the word of God? Until we exhaust all our options and we are convinced that there is no other way. Then we say, okay, Lord, what were you even saying? And God says, I've been talking for five years. When will you listen to me? Okay, Lord, I admit I'm 35 now. There's no husband. Oh, yeah, let me hear what you have to say. And God is saying, sit down. It's not by hopping up and down. There is a secret. You settle down for six months and enter your marital life. You would have entered it five years ago if you paid attention. The day you listen to God, that becomes your this day. Your this day can be any day. He says, there remaineth a rest for the people of God. He said, today, if you will hear his voice, let me tell you something. Time never changes anything. Time only reveals. The day you align to the word of God, that's the day your change starts. Pray in one minute and say, Lord, you're about to speak to me. I'm not rebellious. My heart is open. Go ahead and pray inside and outside. The online community, open your heart and let's pray. Shiba Kato Shiba Kato Thy word is a lamb unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamb unto my feet and a light unto my path. Sing it one more time. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my heart. Hallelujah. Aside from my personal encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ and the privilege that God has given me to understand and know the person of the Holy Spirit. The next, I would say, biggest gift that God has given me is an understanding of the systems of the kingdom. An understanding of the operation of the kingdom. How the kingdom works. The grace for performance that is on the strength of knowledge. Not just jacking yourself and say it will happen and mocking yourself. Understanding that produces consistent results. And there are so many of them. We've shared a lot of them in this house. But in this series, I took six of them. Six 
irrefutable laws of the kingdom that when you walk with please hear me when you walk and live by this truth when you allow the word of god to superimpose your thinking and it becomes your conviction and you are diligent to act i promise you there will be a performance hallelujah deuteronomy 28 verse 1 says and it shall come to pass in that day that if you diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all that i commanded this day not choose the ones you like to do and observe keep live by all these laws that i give unto you right it says that you shall be exalted above all the nations and all these blessings shall come to you and overtake you then he begins to tell you you will be blessed in the city you will be blessed in the country and all of that all those blessings but they are tied to your obedience they are tied to faith they are tied to your response which is a product of your conviction when you don't believe a thing you cannot live by it you cannot act upon it and so we took some laws the first was the law of encounter and we spoke about complete surrender that was the first discussion that complete surrender is the law that governs the manifestation of the hand of God upon a man that every time you see a man a woman a man of God walking in unusual strange dimensions of graces the issue is not criticizing them the issue is not joining all those band of noisemakers calling everybody around town fake there are people who have this understanding the moment they see things they do not understand they see certain superior levels of graces they begin to criticize it once it is outside of their frame of belief how can a woman 35 years barren be pregnant you see that and they come up with you would you would think such a great testimony like this will be received by everybody until you discuss it among critics they'll say where is the woman bring her let's see her and the baby and let's have a doctor certify that it was 35 years as if the man forgot when he married his wife you see how people think so every time people see unusual levels of grace they usually will try to find explanations to discredit that is not as powerful as that but the key is complete surrender never forget this forget about great levels of the anointing when you are still conscious of yourself your reputation your anointing your sermon the quality of your revelations you will never touch the anointing that way are we together god will only truly anoint men who become reflectors men who have paid the price to be his image bearers they are reflectors of him not themselves a man of god who wants power to build a ministry and prove to people he's anointed will keep sweeping empty grounds and and, and and keep preaching to empty pews for the rest of his life because god is not interested in men making a name for themselves the name they make is his reward by uh his reward for them being reflectors of him hallelujah i have seen a lot of preachers come to me and every time they come their first question is what is the secret to the anointing and they think it's just some magic formula i'll say this and that and that eat bitter leaf for one week add cabbage after that pray just put cross on your head for three days and get into power that's charm that's that's not the way it works it's not a charm you put in your pocket and then you just hide it in your suit no those who use that know what they are doing but those who you see true power in the kingdom is a product of relationship it's a product of relationship you cannot receive from a god you do not know you can receive from a herbalist you do not know you can receive from a native doctor you do not know you don't even have to know them but if you want to receive from god the first assignment is not your hand it's your heart my son give me your heart so we discussed that 
complete surrender as the key to unusual grace. Number two was the revelation that realities are only our physical reality is a reflection of a reality greater. Listen to this. The Bible says, for as he thinketh in his heart, his mind, so he is. I told you this law, it is the law that births realities in our world. That your physical life is only a looking glass. Are we together? The quality of your life, spiritually and otherwise, is a reflection of something happening inside. Your life is not authorized to change until your mind changes. Anything that is not a reality in your mind cannot be a reality in your life. Genesis 11, God came and saw Nimrod, the son of Cush, mobilized certain people and said, Go to come, let us build a city whose top will reach the heavens and let us make a name for ourselves. The Bible says they burnt mortar and slime and bricks and started building. And then the Bible says God came to look down and see the building which the son of man had built. God said as far as he was concerned, they had finished the building because they had conceived it as a possibility right here. Your life will never change until your mind changes. Let me tell you the danger of trying to change things physically without changing it in your mind. If one million naira enters your hand and there is a poverty mentality in you, that mentality will adjust your behavior to force that money to leave you. And until it leaves you and you become poor, then your mind will interpret it as you being normal. Your mind will interpret wealth as being abnormal because it's not consistent with your beliefs. Are we together? Yeah. So you must make sure that transformation happens first within. You don't change people by just trying to change their physical environment. I gave an illustration one time when I was speaking about transformation. Have you dashed somebody a shirt or a trouser that you used for three years? It's still looking brand new because your mindset made you care for it. You always ironed it. You dashed the person the clothes and in two weeks a shirt that was white has become brown. The person's mind is showing on the shirt. Are we together now? Yes. You give that person a shirt. Ordinarily, you wear it for two days and wash it, or one day and wash it. But this guy has worn it for two weeks. Why? Because in his mindset, he says it is not necessary. Neatness is unnecessary. It's only um, an emergency. And once I am not sick, there is no reason why I should be neat. That's what his mindset is telling him. So he wears the shirt for two weeks until everything tears and then he throws it away. If the shirt has love written on it, you see that the O has faded or disappeared. Two weeks. It's the same thing that will happen to a corporation when you take the security man and make him the MD and make the MD a security man. You know, most people see wealthy people, for instance, and say, how can we be walking? We are the ones sweeping, opening gates. There is a wicked man sitting under AC just signing papers. And his salary is 10 million. And we are here receiving 15,000. No, it's not the suit. It's not the AC. It's the mindset. If you want to know, switch them. Take the security man and keep him on that seat. Let me tell you what he will do. We've discussed it, right? He will still stabilize us. He will drink what is in the fridge. Because his mindset does not teach him that he has capacity to reproduce it. Careful. Hallelujah. That's alright. Let me have your attention. So, with that kind of thinking, look up please. With that kind of thinking and that kind of faulty understanding, what happens to the person? You know, so, it has to be in your life as it is in your mind. People try to change their physical environment. We use all kinds of things to change our mindsets. So, somebody can wear a suit and feel like a CEO, but there's, there's nothing CEO there. You see, so there's nothing to deliver. You can carry complimentary cards and move around and they say, who are you? You say, my name is this and that. I am the CEO. What is your value? I don't understand what you're saying. Because for you to be a CEO, there's something you should have gotten. You ignored it and thought it was all suits. How we fool ourselves. We hate adjusting our minds. But we love trying to fake it in the physical. 
and Nigerians can fake things. We can fake wealth. You can fake as you people act as if they eat fried chicken and, and this every time. Whereas in their mindset, they are living in abject poverty and they will not make adjustment. And sometimes pastors, in a bid to encourage people, this is what we tell people: act like your future. And what what I understand what we mean. We mean change your mindset. But someone now says, Okay, I'm hearing act like your future. And hot son, the person wears suit and tie and is moving. Say, I am a CEO. He carries a bag and he thinks I'm acting like my future and he mocks himself for 10 years. Whereas the first way to act like your future is to think like your future. You must think like your future to become like the future. So the issue is not going to borrow money and now start buying shoes of 10,000 and 15,000 when you cannot afford food of 200 naira. The idea is not to create a fake outer environment. The idea is to begin to give your mindset new informations. And inevitably, trust me, trust me people, I know what I'm telling you. Inevitably, your physical environment will become a reflection of your mindset. Our physical environment is only a mirror. Have you seen someone stand before a mirror? Assuming I stand before a mirror and maybe there's something um, on my head or on my shoulder and I'm trying to remove it, will I put my hand inside the mirror to change it? I adjust it here and the man in the mirror adjusts. The man in the mirror is this physical you. The real you is the person within. If that adjustment does not happen, forget about trying to create change. That's why people create temporal changes. And then their mindset superimpose it. Are we together? So, I try to act as if I'm a Christian. I'm not serious about God and I'm not serious about the world. But simply because I want to enter a relationship with a lady who comes for koinonia. And she has told me if I don't come for koinonia, no relationship. I come and I fake it. Are we together? While they are singing, I watch people raise their hands. I'm not raising it out of conviction. I don't even know what is happening. And after five minutes, I say, my dear, I'm leaving this place. Because my reality tells me you are supposed to be drinking by eight o'clock. You don't worship God by eight o'clock. And you have programmed your mind to always drink by evening. While worship is going, you are just remembering that somebody can buy it free. I don't have money, but somebody will buy the beer free. But you are in church just by force. It's the same thing pastors try to do to people. Be nice. Don't be bad. Why are you a bad girl? Change. If she could change, she would not be that way. There is an understanding. The key is not to tell people to change. The key is to show them how to change. Hallelujah. As it is within you, so will it be in your life. The Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence, he says, for out of it are the issues of life. Guard your heart. Don't allow any kind of thing enter your mind. Let me tell you why many of us are confused. We are confused because the informations we allow into our spirits are not constructive. You finish listening to a worship song right now. Two hours of strong worship. Are we together? The moment you finish, you have the selection. You have gospel songs. You have uh, all, all the others, you know, songs like that, well selected. So when you want to feel spiritual, you finish listening to the gospel songs and then you announce a kite, enough of church, I beg. Let me just hype myself and enjoy. And now you put another thing. You are, you are diluting what you spend time. You finish listening to the word of God and all of a sudden you just put a pornographic movie and you are watching and you are happy and you are laughing. At the end of it, you prayed for two hours but right now you don't even know what your mind is thinking again. You, 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 the goal was for your mind to think creatively but all through your mind is thinking about something you are trying to fight because you are feeding it. Are we together? You are feeding it. You go and sit down in the midst of people who are always gossiping. You sit from 10 o'clock till 2, talking about people, tearing down people. And afterwards, you go back 
and you are surprised that that is your entire thinking you have to protect your heart build a wall around your heart don't allow just anything find expression no no there are things i will never be found associating with not be i don't care whether they are good or bad honestly i am on a project i am well aware of how much my life would have changed if i were more renewed than i am now and i'm on a consistent project to renewing myself i'm not ready to sabotage that effort through carelessness are we together now please be careful what you allow in your mind you allow people keep talking to you you sit down and talk about somebody who became a millionaire in four months and say four months millionaire there are thieves in nigeria I saw one he's my neighbor let me i'm just waiting for that guy and you sit down let me tell you what you are doing you are associating wealth with negativism your mind cannot agree that you will be blessed because you have already castigated somebody and you have put a benchmark on yourself to never be wealthy so somebody becomes a millionaire in four months instead of you to find out what kingdom principle did he did he practice what sacrifice what happened no we don't argue we say no way it took me 20 years your father will tell you or your mother will tell you to buy my first golf how can a young man become a millionaire in one month 20 years one uh, four months it took you 20 years because of what your knowledge could deliver that's how long it took you to be in the labor room 20 years are we together there are different ways to get to lagos you can trek you can ride a bike are we together you can follow a luxurious bus you can have your private car you can fly you can take a private charter you can have your own jet you will arrive in different conditions don't don't ever make a mistake that you will arrive with the same condition no that guy who trekked from when buhari won that gentleman they they appreciated him but have did you see the guy that's how life is with many people we use all kinds of formulas that we think will take us to the place of destiny and when we find people applying superior kingdom principles rather than finding out we argue and we say no this is the only way i know that means that's the only way there is tell somebody there is another way hallelujah say there is another way please give us first corinthians chapter 12 the last verse first corinthians 12 the last verse hallelujah hallelujah god is changing us first corinthians 12 the last verse please everybody read it says but covet earnestly the best gifts uh-huh read on and yet i show unto you a more excellent way say there is a more excellent way the fact that you are doing it the way you know to do brothers and sisters hear me does not mean that is the only way you can do ministry the way you were taught in the seminary in bible school but that does not mean that is the ultimate way there is a more excellent way are we together you can manage your family the way you know you can try to know god the way you have been taught but there is a more excellent way and that's the way that the lord is teaching us that it is not all up to God and it is not all up to you it will always take partnership because the kingdom of God is made of systems and every system defines the operation of God in a particular way there is the administrative and governmental system of the kingdom there is the economic system of the kingdom are we together now there is the family system of the kingdom the area i was teaching the school of ministry students yesterday and fortunately we are, we are studying the course ministry and while i was teaching them i taught them something i told them i said when the devil comes to your life he finds out which operation of the system you do not understand that becomes his entrance point in your life so if satan comes to your life and finds out that you are a prayerful person he will not start his attack that way he finds out that you don't have a problem fasting and praying and studying the word you have already understood the relevance yet you are not an excellent person he uses your laps 
of lack of excellence as the access point to your life. Are we together now? Jesus said this, Satan cometh to me and does not find anything. Satan tried to access the life of Jesus through different systems. At first, he tried to terminate him at birth. It didn't happen. He refrained himself. Waited for Jesus when he was tired. He now came trying to use hunger. Turn these stones into bread. It didn't work. He tried to use pride and ego. Are you not the son of God? He shall put his angels charge over you. Even try to use spirituality. Jesus defeated him. And the Bible says he left him for a season. Watch this. He now tried to come through Peter. Are we together? To prohibit Jesus from talking about his death and resurrection. Jesus detected it and rebuked him. Finally, he came through Judas. And he was allowed. So that scriptures will be fulfilled. Not because Jesus did not know. The Bible says... After they took the communion, Satan entered Judas and he went and caused, made the arrangement for them to kill Jesus Christ. The systems of the kingdom. The area you do not know is the area the devil will defeat you in. And so I'm opening us up to the multifaceted dimensions of the systems of the kingdom to the end that we will be fortified. Not just spiritually, not just financially. Not just maritally, there will be complete and balanced growth. Number three, I shared with us last week on how to receive direction and divine strategies. There is an operation of the kingdom that is responsible for helping men surmount mountains in their lives. And it's found in Proverbs chapter 3 when you read from verse 5 to 7. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. The next verse says, In all your ways, acknowledge him. And there's a promise tied to it. It said, If you acknowledge him, he shall direct your path. Right? Then you read verse 7. It says, Be not wise in your own understanding. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. But the verse of emphasis is verse 6. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. And he shall direct your path. That every time you are confused in your life, which is normal for men, we are human beings, we do not have all the knowledge. There are times you will be faced with mountains that are bigger than you. Listen to me, please. There are times you will be faced with all kinds of mountains, financial mountains, marital mountains, educational mountains, career mountains, spiritual mountains, health mountains. There are all kinds of mountains before you. And Jesus is teaching us how to surmount those mountains. He says, every time you get to a point where you are in a crossroad, you are confused, you don't know what to do. He says, forget about the object of your worry and begin to acknowledge him. Flaunt his majesty, remind him of the things he has done before and he's authorized to create a pathway. Number four, the law of mastery and competence. This is an operation of the kingdom that is responsible for producing greatness and rewards. The kingdom operates on a reward system. This is one of the fundamental laws of wealth, one of the fundamental laws of relevance, one of the fundamental laws of influence, one of the fundamental laws of greatness, the law of competence. Proverbs 18, 16, it says the gift of a man I told you to write many things as similes of that word gift the value of a man the contributions of a man are we together the abilities of a man when well refined developed and deployed will make room for him will make room for him regardless of your background koinonia regardless of what you know and what you do not know when you find your giftings the abilities that God deposited in you and you pay the price to refine them, they will bring you all kinds of rewards. Tangible rewards. What are tangible rewards? Money and all the physical privileges that come. And intangible rewards. The sense of fulfillment and satisfaction that comes knowing that you are revealing the glory of God and that you are using your gifts to serve humanity. It brings fulfillment. 
but it happens only at the mercy of competence i'm building from tonight right here when a man finds his god-given ability koinonia please listen to me i plead with you in the name of the lord jesus christ pay attention when a man finds his god-given ability he has found his way out of mediocrity he has found his way out of failure he has found his way out of pain and tears but your gift in itself although it came from god it always comes as a seed it always comes unrefined listen to me it will take that gift passing through a process of refining of development are we together now and of of mastery in dispensing it to be paid for and to be received and rewarded for nobody is going to bless you just because you think you have been having dreams that god is calling you to be a chef or to be a caterer have you mastered the cooking to an extent that a governor can call you or call your catering company this is the area i have problems with men of god because we never challenge people to be at their best they just bring little prophets offering for us and we prophesy and we lie to them because we know that their gifts the way it is someone comes to meet you and says i want to have a, a construction company how many years experience do you have nothing do you have a very credible engineer no you are the one who is the ceo of the company what did you study you studied fashion how does fashion relate with building stadiums and building bridges you are an entrepreneur do you have the required engineers no but he's my tribe man and they now bring one million for the man of god and the man of god said go it is done i told you last week it's not done don't let anybody fool you like that favor is when preparedness meets opportunity favor hear me is when preparedness meets opportunity you want a job but please and please before i prophesy to you have you done your homework are we together now you are trusting god for a job somewhere before i speak to you have you learned people's skills have you mastered your art do you know your onions can you deliver competently don't come and ask me to prophesy into your life when you cannot you have not done your homework it's a mockery on god so god gives you an opportunity you have not mastered your cooking and they now tell you cook for 300 people the name of your company is goodness catering services that it has a spiritual name has nothing to do with the fact that good results will be delivered you now cook food for the 300 people and you make the person who recommended you to look stupid he did something to you as a favor because you are his church member but on your part you could not deliver before you start crying for favor make sure you have something in your hand well enough to deliver father give me a good husband have you mastered the art of being a good wife when was the last book you read and when was the last time you read it are we together oh god give me children what have you studied about parenting or you are just concentrating on trying to make sure your wife takes in have you studied on parenting you see many times let me tell you something get my teaching activating seasons of favor the lord taught me never to pray necessarily for opportunities because time and chance opportunities and seasons happen to them all one day like the hand of a clock your turn will come it must come but the key is to prepare so that the day you enter the presence of greatness you will never have to return again say amen competence i like you to say after me in the name of jesus i am gifted oh come on koinonia chorus it in the name of jesus i am gifted i am anointed the ability of the spirit is at work in me 
and I cooperate with God by refining those gifts knowing this that a day of favor must come to me and I do not want to abuse that day one day in the life of any man listen one day in the life of any man you will be seated before your destiny helpers it's up to you to deliver to the latter are we together i dread any time in my life when i will stand in the presence of greatness and would not have built capacity that is sufficient enough to open for me a door i dread the time when koinonia will be hundred thousand members and yet i do not have the leadership capacity to manage those crowds do you think god will give you there are certain people god pegs them at a level because that's the only level that will make them relevant and yet spiritual anything outside that is beyond their ability to manage there are people who can only manage anything less than one million they have not trained their minds and their lives to be able to manage those kinds of resources. God will not give you 100 million. If you saw it in a dream, wake up. It's a dream. It is your capacity that will make it happen in your life. I, Daniel, understood by books. You must buy the truth and sell it not. Refine your gifts. Refine your gifts. Refine your gifts. Write it down refine your gifts don't just identify them refine them they are the keys they are your bailout they are your bailout the concept of something for nothing is wickedness hello koinonia listen to me the concept of something for nothing is wickedness everybody rises according to their contribution our rewards in life will always be in direct measure to our contribution to want to become a millionaire giving the contributions of a pauper is wickedness that's why thieves are called thieves that's why we arrest them when we find them why because they use guns they don't contribute anything yet they want your money are we together so they bully you they say your money or your life bill gates is the way he is today because we can see his contribution you know why we insult politicians and we call them wicked they get their money by corruption we cannot see the value commensurate to what they have we see a man who is a local government chairman we do not see any developmental strides we don't see any entrepreneurial acumen yet we see billions in his account we know that that is questionable this is the basis upon which people are accused you don't accuse a man when you can see the value he's providing if i can provide the value of a billionaire you should not have a problem with billions in my account are we together now yes the question i want to ask you is that seat of greatness you want present to me the value that you are offering that authorizes you to sit there nothing for many of us are we seeing now a woman once asked me to pray for her i think she owned a school and she said things were not working the students were leaving and she said a prophet came around to pray he fed son he prayed and told her there's something somebody in another school one other mama that had his neighboring school that she came and buried a uh, charm in in the, the madam's own school so that she would not prosper when the woman told me that thing i said madam i minister deliverance to people but i can tell you this is nonsense that prophet that uh, the, the 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 prophet man i may not call him fake but i know that he's not seen clearly because most people use wizardry and wizardry peeps it's in the bible he said we are not like wizards right that peep they peep into the realm of the spirit there is no accurate knowledge they summon strange spirits to deliver information for them which can be aberrated so he comes and the woman thinks the only reason why her school is not growing well why should i send my child to her school your school uniform alone depicts non-excellence you don't know that colors are communicators
check shirt, check, check, short knicker. That's a school uniform. For instance, and then you put red or blue socks, carelessly done, with one tailor who is not competent, but is a brother to the principal. And so you allow the person to sew anything. You see someone very tall and his, 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 his trouser is, is just at, around his lap. No excellence. What of the teachers? The te I'm, not, I'm not being insulted, but the teachers themselves, look at the result of the person teaching them accounting. F9 in accounting, F9 in math, F9 in economics, F9 in commerce. He's the chief, he's even the head of department of maybe social sciences. Why? Because they attend the same church. I'm telling you why people fail. There is a place for the spiritual. But never think incompetence will be substituted for, um, or competence will be substituted for, for prayer. Now it is that kind of school. You finish everything. The name is not good. There is no intelligent PTA uh, parents teacher forum. They are always fighting. You are increasing the school fees every term, every session. But there is no commensurate development. You write YX, 60 people write junior YX, only five have up to five credits. The students are not so dull. The teachers don't understand what they are doing. It is that kind of school. You write in miracle service and drop it and bring a seed and say, Lord, that school must change. And every time you pray, God tells you, go and meet somebody who has the best school in a city. Usually those kinds of people, they fight those who are doing well. Because they think they are colleagues. We all have schools. What is, what is the name of your own? You are not delivering. Let me tell you what keeps people incompetent. Don't think because you are doing the same thing another person is doing. That that means you are colleagues. Are we together? Yes. There are men of God I see, I know, I honor them with my life. I know that we are all men of God. But I know there are levels and there are standards. I will not sit down and say, oh, this... No, 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 no. Everybody is clapping for Joshua Selman. The same way they are clapping for me, I'm clapping for others too. Are we together now? But this colleague mentality is what keeps people incompetent. You have a supermarket. It brings you one million per day. You have a small kiosk. It brings you maybe 15,000 per day. You now sit down together. We are all wearing suits. We are colleagues. Are you doing the same thing? No. Are you getting the same result? No. But in our arrogance, we say, we the entrepreneurs. This guy has a kiosk. This guy has a shopping mall. But that humility to learn. There is a saying in Hausa that the person who can ask for road will never get missing. The, the keys to make us competent are there. It just takes meekness. But many of us are too embarrassed to improve. We are too ashamed to seek knowledge. Especially because that knowledge we want may come from those who are younger than us, less privileged than us, so we don't submit ourselves to listen. I've been in ministry for 10 years. It's not working. But you say we are still ministry. We are part of PFN. We are part of CAN. A young man comes and in three years he's doing remarkable things. I said, forget about all those small children. He's young. That's why he's attracting his age mates. Have your age mates died? Why don't you attract them? excuses that are reflectors of our our lack of desire to move forward i made up my mind it's a vow i have made with destiny that in every area where the lord wants me to excel i will master it and i will lead the field in the name of jesus christ if you are a preacher here, I'm speaking to you. Don't join people when they are clapping for you and saying, Joshua Selman, you are the lion of the tribe of Judah. They are destroying you. Thank God for their applause. But go back and say, it's time to walk. Be committed to personal development. You are a businessman. You hit your first million. You don't cross your leg and say, my soul, find rest. No. You say, the journey is just about to start. Thank God for all those things. But I need to learn. Who needs to mentor me? Who needs to build me? Champions are champions because they keep moving. Mediocres are mediocres because they stop moving. Give yourself to continuous improvement. Continuous development. Number five. 
The fifth law in the kingdom is the ministry of destiny helpers. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. May God bring a helper to your life. Mark chapter 2 verse 1 to 5. Please media help us. Mark 2 1 to 5. I'm teaching you the fifth law that is responsible for producing champions. Giants in the kingdom. Will you open up the gates? Hey, open up the door. Will you open up the gates? Open up the door. Again, he entered into Capernaum. Please, let's read this down to verse 5. After some days, and it was noised abroad that he was in the house. This is Jesus now. And straightway, Many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much about the door. And he preached the word unto them. Now something remarkable happens, verse 3. And they came unto him. You, isn't it interesting that the Bible hardly mentions the names of destiny helpers? It just says, they, certain men, a certain man, never mentions their name but mentions what they did. Let me tell you something. Destiny helpers do not even know they are destiny helpers. He says, bringing one who was sick of palsy, which was born of four. That means four people carried him. Four destiny helpers carrying a man. He says, and when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, what did they do? They uncovered the roof where he was jesus now and when they had broken it up they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay verse 5 when jesus saw their faith he said unto the sick of the palsy son thy sins be forgiven thee when you read on he was eventually healed watch this write this down destiny helpers are people who have been anointed assigned and commission to bless you and to take you to the next level of your destiny anointed assigned by god commission when elijah was about to die of hunger in brook cherry the holy ghost spoke to him and said go to a city called zarephath he said dear i have commanded a widow the widow never act, she never acted like she was commanded but god told the prophet i have commanded i have compelled her spirit to respond to you listen no matter how hard working you are no matter how competent you are in the dealings of god with men a time must come in your life when someone else will have to lift you please come shadrach shadrach is right at this level everybody please see watch this call this a level in life i am up here standing his desire is to come up here now he has done well he's played his part well suited but he has the gift the grace the anointing but no access are we together now he needs an introduction of a personality or certain personalities in his life called destiny helpers listen to me the assignment of a destiny helper is to take you from where you are to the next phase of your life please i want you to listen because some of us are at this level right now the truth is you have refined your gift the truth is you are competent but you are saying lord where is that man where is that woman who must speak there are three kinds of destiny helpers please write this quickly three kinds of destiny helpers sorry shadrach you have to stand okay go ahead just just write number one 
the first kinds of destiny helpers are called divine connectors divine connectors second kings chapter 5 divine connectors please give us from verse 1 to 5 second kings 5 from verse 1 to 5 learn this what i'm teaching you is not basic at all it's not simple at all it's a deep mystery in the kingdom that produces giants the first kind of destiny helpers are called divine connectors who are they let me tell you who they are they are men and women who do not have the physical capacity to lift you but they can they have access they can point you to those who can lift you they do not have the anointing to heal you but they can take you to a church where you will be healed they do not have money to give you but they can take you to somebody who can help you they are called divine connectors their assignment is to connect you they don't have the power in themselves to help you are we together but they have access to an information that you need here is a situation a great man called naaman the bible says he was the captain of the host of the king of syria listen it says he was a great man with his master an honorable man because by him the lord had given deliverance to syria he says he was also a mighty man in valor but there was an area in his life lacking he was blessed spiritually blessed maritally but financially something was still hanging are we together he had excelled in every area but certain areas were still hanging and a miracle is about to happen to him verse 2 and the syrians had gone out by companies and had brought listen away captive out of the land of israel who a little maid you see no name again no name take note of this little girl because she's about to be a destiny connector it says a little maid and she waited upon naman's wife she was a pa to the big man's wife one day something happened next verse she said unto her mistress would god my lord with the prophet that is in samaria for he would recover him of his leprosy that's a destiny connector the little girl said i know i'm a i'm a captive but while i was in israel there is a man i know that that man is powerful i pray that my being little will not make you to not listen if you can please talk to your husband that he should go to that prophet i know he will be healed these are destiny connectors sam i know you have this talent but i was browsing and i saw that there is an international music auditioning i'm not a musician but i thought the information may be important for you certain men destiny connectors are we together now this lady had no power to heal the man but she knew a prophet Kai, who knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody around your life that you have ignored there is someone who knows who will bless you but you have ignored them because they do not have capacity in themselves to help you let's run through this very quickly and one went in and told his lord saying Thus and thus said the maid that is in the land there of verse 5. And the king of Syria said, Go to, go and I will send a letter. So on and so forth and all of that. And when you read down to verse 10, Naaman, on account of, in fact, no, 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 let, let's go to verse, let's go to verse 8. Can we go to verse 8? There's something I want to point out there. Listen. And it was so, when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes because the king was afraid right and then elisha said let him come now and see whether and he shall know that there is a prophet in israel read on and so on and so forth elisha came go to verse 12. listen look at this he had told him to go and bath in the river of jordan now historically speaking jordan at the time this man was given an instruction was not clean very dirty are we together so the man felt at my status to go and bath watch this he says are not all of these rivers you know better and all of that so he returned and went away in rage 
this is where I'm trying to go. He was at the point of his breakthrough, but in anger, he was about to miss his miracle. The destiny helper comes again. And, the, and his servants came near and spoke to him, listen, and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee to do something worse, will you not do it? Somebody came and spoke to him. Are we together again? And said, no, no, let me encourage you. And that man went to bath. When you read 14 and 15, he bathed seven times. And his skin, the Bible records, was like that of a child, that of a baby. Destiny connectors. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. That God will give you the sensitivity to see that men may be ordinary, but they carry extraordinary things. Are we together now? They may be your younger ones. They may be children. They may not have the ability to bless you. But I pray that you have the discernment to listen to them when they speak to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The second kinds of destiny helpers are called men of influence. The second category of destiny helpers are called men of influence. Mark chapter 15 verse 43. Please give it to us very fast. Let's, let's be fast about it. Mark 15 verse 43. It says, Joseph of Arimathea, this was Jesus Christ now. Right? We, we shared a bit of this during our prayer and fasting. I'm reiterating it for, so that we can believe. Josh, um, Joseph of Arimathea, an honorable counselor. The Bible says, which also waited for the kingdom of God, came and used his honor or influence he went boldly before Pilate and prayed for the body of Jesus listen there are men in your life who can use their influence to open doors for you and to endorse you before great men you need them a time must come in your life where you will need them are we together do you know that please come assuming this lady is looking for a job this lady is looking for a job. She's tried and tried. But the privilege God has given me to lead this ministry. We have very influential people scattered around who honor the grace of God in my life and I appreciate it. I can use my influence. Are we together? And meet somebody. Someone like our daddy prof and say, daddy, please. There is a lady here, honestly. She can be good for a secretary. I endorse this lady. I know that this lady is good. Daddy, please, do you have any friend that can give her a job? Do you know he may not have planned blessing her? But because my influence is a middleman between two of them, he's compelled by his honor for me to do something about her situation. And this girl will get a job. Are we together? God bless you. There are men of influence. Those who preach and say you should not mind men of influence let me tell you what they are telling you remain where you are forever because it will take a joseph of arimathea to speak to the king for you men of influence men of influence i've shared the story here in koinonia true story that a, a guy who wanted to go to nda but there was a height level that he needed to 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 get to and he was short of it maybe by a few inches and they were about to deny him that opportunity and somebody who had connection to the emir of zazo here the emir of of, of of zaria and all of that um came and met the gentleman and they wrote a letter no he didn't even write a letter he said they should go and tell the commandant of nda that the emir of zazo has added his height come on now that's called influence if the commandant does not act he knows what that means <laughs> to his daily bread to his career are we together look let me tell you influence is a force that moves men to their destiny don't you ever make anyone make you criticize influential people i pray for them in my life i want them in my life i desire them in my life one of the priceless things i learned about my father my father is connected to men of influence almost everywhere if it's police station my father knows somebody in the police station prisons my father knows someone if your car breaks down no matter the brand there is a mechanic somewhere my father knows 
It's an attribute in his life I covet earnestly. Are we together? Who do you know, brothers and sisters, that can bail you out of this wicked Nigeria? You can buy land as a born again believer and somebody can just come as a politician to bully you. May God raise a man of influence to call him and say, if you touch my pastor, I touch your job. Influence. You need influence in this life. You see, the people in the world are smarter than believers. We sit down and keep praying in tongues and we fool ourselves. You need influence. Bishop Oyedeko is great today. I know he's great as an anointed man. But it's not just because he's an anointed man. He's a pastor of influential people. Are we together? If the managers of five banks are members of your church, are we together? Your chief financial secretary is the, is the, is the CEO of Zenith Bank. Will you be poor as a church? Please answer me. Will you be poor as a church? Don't say it does not matter. Keep fooling yourself. It matters big time in this country we live in. You need men of influence. Many of our parents ignore them. That's why they are suffering. May God make you a destiny helper to someone. That one letter from you to say, no, no, I know this person. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want God to make me a man of influence. I am very unapologetic about it. I want God to connect me to politicians, to connect me to business people, to connect me to diplomats. I'm not part of those liars in church who will say it doesn't matter. I'm just a righteous man. I have fortified myself. I will still be holy with them and I will take advantage of the influence for the kingdom. Hallelujah. When the former president, I heard a very funny story. I will only say part of it. The former president uh, of Nigeria did something funny to one prominent um, will I call him father elder statesman in Nigeria he did something funny to him and um, within three days he received a call from about five presidents this is verified they all called him and said what are you doing we heard you did so and so to this man he made a request you didn't grant it the president himself was trying to call the man to beg him he didn't even pick his call this is verified I'm not just this. Ah! May God make Koinonia a place of influence. Please answer that amen well. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Men of influence. The key to strategic kingdom advancement is key influence. Not just evangelism. That you are surrounded by men that matter. So that somebody will not come with a tractor and bulldoze your church because he thinks he has influence. Uh -uh. Influence gives you a voice. The Bible says a rich man's wealth is his strength. It's, it's a fortification. You need men of influence around your life. There's too much wickedness. Who do you know in the army that God can use to speak for you? Who do you know in the military? Who do you know in the banking system? Who has God connected you with? In the area of medicine, if someone is about to die, do you know a, an influential consultant who can facilitate his papers to go to India? You need men of influence. Say, I need men of influence. Open your mouth and pray in one minute. Send them to my life. Send them in my life. Send them in my life. Shabarako Sebredi. Rikota Shila Karuya Sebrahatala Madakadia. Lord, I pray one man of influence can change the story of your generation. One man of influence. Just one. Some of you, that's what brought you to Koinonia. You are saying, oh God, I need a miracle. God is speaking to you tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hear me. You know, they say when they post you NYSC, once they post you and nobody can walk it before. Once NYSC starts, there is no hope of you being redeployed. So they told you, in my presence, I have seen people four months in NYSC, carried away, not marriage, not pregnancy. Somebody used his influence and said, I need this person for his personal comfort to be in an area. It was quietly done. 
enable you you call it third list but there are many lists according to what influence can bring are we together there are people whose admission letters are printed overnight jam irrespective come on now cut off point nonsense a voice is the cut off point influence and god brings them if you do not have men of influence you will join the queue in life and the queue does not move that's the sad thing about the queue in life there are too many greedy people in front of you who will not allow the queue move even when they have it they won't give you chance they will stay there till they die so the hope of you moving to your place of destiny will be impossible how many look at redeemed and living faith in every city in every place they have land do you know there are territories that antagonize christians they will not give you land but they had influence they spoke to one allergy who knows what their prayer did for him and said you better talk to your local government chairman to give us land and they say please give my pastor land as an allergy as much as he wants that's what influence can do may god give you influence in the name of jesus there are many churches in zaria who want to buy large properties there are there are lands around but they may never give churches they may never give certain people because they say one somebody holds it no 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 no. you watch what will happen in the name of jesus with koinonia let me tell you everybody on earth is a tenant nobody has a right to bully anybody for land god will give us land that will shock you it will be as if they brought it from heaven and just say pick it will happen by the spirit I'm not one of those fearful people who will not move. The earth is the Lord. But you see, it's not just the voice of heaven from the voice of God from heaven. God will connect you to somebody. I have prayed for many unbelievers and I'm happy about it because they will remember my prayer the day I need their help. I prayed for them. If God gives them breakthrough, tomorrow we'll say, please, we need your influence to buy. 10 hectares of land for koinonia and they will say let it be done if they refuse the man will buy it in his name and sell it to us influence our parents rejected men of influence now they are paying for everything just to give somebody admission in secondary school see how we fast and pray whereas one signature can answer that prayer i pray for you from the depth of my heart any man who needs to enter your life who has the influence you require may the god that i serve bring them into your life may the god that i serve bring them into your life please hear me every man on earth answers yes sir to someone are we together if they refuse to tell you go ahead find who they answer yes sir to and they will answer yes sir to you too he said for i am a man under authority i am under authority so there are others under my authority there is no man who is no matter how people make themselves gods don't be threatened by men's noise they only talk every animal claims to be the king of the jungle until the lion shows up when the lion shows up it doesn't say keep quiet they will be silent whoever has robbed your family of what is their due whoever has closed the door for you there are many of us your qualification can give you a job but the people endorsing you are like you so their words are not heard may god bring a, a man whose signature matters in the name of jesus christ there's no nonsense like a door that is closed it's a mirage someone can open that door I've had the privilege of meeting very wealthy people. I've had the privilege of meeting very influential people. And I have seen the way doors open just like that. I've seen doors open just like that. I remember one time, one of our chairman, um, the chairman board of trustees of this ministry is a general in the army. I remember when he was a colonel, sometime in Lagos, you know, we are so close and every time from the airport he will send the military people with the car his car and then with military bikes nobody does any checking as soon as they are coming they just flashlight and they salute them 
access because of influence who told you driver's license takes three months it is the general thing when my international passport expired the general himself he drove me sir with his car we went to passport office in abuja in kaduna i even did the first one in abuja so it was even complicated in 30 minutes how many minutes about 30 minutes or so they brought out my passport for me and i was ready to go the woman who did it the madam there last year i went to minister in nigerian immigration their fellowship their chapel when i went there there was a woman they had moved her there and quickly i made friends with her because my passport would expire again Keep laughing at me don't lend the wisdom in what i'm saying listen when you see men of influence don't resent them you resent them because pastors have taught you they are all unbelievers don't mind them mind them mind them just make sure their influence does not destroy you but please mind them don't have that mindset of throwing men of influence and think every gate will open to you just like that but the greatest key is to become an influence yourself when you become an influence you become a magnet to influential people oh that's why i love the anointing goodness 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 the anointing will bail you out it will make you an influence you will not just look for men of influence they will come to you the bible calls them gentiles it calls their kings he said they will come to the brightness of your rising the last kind of destiny help us are faithful men faithful men men who will stay with you in the thick and thin 90 percent of the people you will ever meet in your life don't like you they come to you simply because of your gift and what you represent you will hardly find people who love you for who you are but in your life there are men you will find who love you for who you are they will stay with you for time's sake first first samuel 22 verse 1 and 2 please let's hurry up first samuel 22 verse 1 and 2 you reign you reign hello him you reign you reign you reign Hallelujah. David therefore departed thence. David was running away from Saul. Saul was about to kill David because he was termed a rebel. Are we together? Now David ran. And the Bible says he escaped to a cave, not a palace, a cave called Adullam. But the Bible says, and when his brethren and all his father's house had, they did what? They followed him to that cave. There are men that can follow you even when you are in the cave. May God bring them to your life. Let me tell you something. Listen, one of the most disastrous things for a leader is to not find men who believe in you when things are not going well. They leave you alone when you are lonely. But there are certain destiny helpers called faithful men. Are we together? Faithful. He said a friend is made for adversity there are many of us when you go through bad things there's nobody to stand there with you when everything works well everybody comes but there are a kind of destiny helpers called faithful men verse 2 and everyone that was in distress one that was in debt everyone who was discontented gathered themselves unto him and he became what captain over them in a cave how do you submit to a man who is a failure how do you submit to a ministry that does not have result how do you remain loyal to a business that is not working it's called faithfulness there are such men 
There are such men. We were discussing the other day with Ejimi about a particular man of God who had gone through rough times in his life and nothing had changed about his ministry. Not one person we know of influence had left the ministry because of what happened. And I said, they are called faithful men. They are not called men of God. They are not called assistants. They are called faithful men. May God position them in your life. How many great men in this country have fallen and they are left alone? There are some of us, when our parents were wealthy, there were all kinds of relatives. Now, right now, there's nobody to even pay your school fees because there are no faithful men. There are psychophants around in our world. But there are people called faithful men. The Bible says that he was captain over them and they were with him in a cave. 400 people in a cave. There was no hope. It's not like they were there hoping things would change. They were saying, if we die, let's die with you. God. If you're a leader here, please let me give you a secret. Every time you pray, don't just pray for gifted people. Pray for faithful men. A faithful man is better than a gifted man. A gifted rebel is not an asset. Hallelujah. Verse 3, and then we'll stop. And David went thence to the... Okay, let's just stop there. I'm not going to read. Let me give you the next verse to read. First Chronicles. First Chronicles. That will tell you the whole story all till... But, but then we are looking at something else. First Chronicles 12. Let's read 1 to 3, then move to verse 38. First Chronicles 12, 1 to 3, then 38. Let me show you something very powerful about these faithful men. Look at this. He said, now these are the men that came to David in, Zik in Ziklag. I'm fast forwarding now. He says, while he kept himself close because of Saul, the son of Kish, he said they were among the mighty men. What did he call them? helpers of the war so they had stayed with him even when he had now become mighty and was ready to fight he trained them they remained there they had now become helpers of the war and it lists all of them go to verse 38 for time's sake read with me please everybody hallelujah mm. all these men of war that could keep rank do you know what that hold on that means when David told them, you stand as a musician, they remained as a musician because David said it. Absolute loyalty regardless of results. Are we together? He says they came with what? A perfect heart. Nobody was doing eye service. They loved him genuinely. They were willing to die for him genuinely. He said to make David king, their determination they said david you don't need to bribe us we we are alive to make sure the word of the lord in your life will come to pass do you know god can send this man with you everything in your life can nose dive and they will come and say jimmy if everyone will leave you i will be here for you whether your wife gets pregnant or not i am here for you how many pastors are hiding many things in their lives? Because if members know, they will run away because they are selfish people. But there is a grace. I truly believe there is a grace that attracts faithful men to the life of a man. Watch the kinds of people you are attracting. And don't be too quick to say these people are my friends. We even say they are my right hand men. A friend is made for adversity. Adversity separates people. You will be shocked to see how many people will call you king of the Jews and crucify you tomorrow. But this guy said they were with a perfect heart to make sure a Jimmy becomes that CEO. With a perfect heart to make sure that Abiodun gets to that place of destiny. So even if they would die in the process, no problem. There are such men. Listen, he said, and all the rest also in Israel were of one heart. To make David king. They threw away their own personal agenda. And said David. For as long as you are not king. We will not rest. Do you have such people in your life? Who will take responsibility. And say for as long as you have not gotten that federal government job. I will not rest. You can call and say Kai uncle you have tried. Don't worry God is faithful. He said God is faithful. I take it as a ministry to make sure you become gainfully employed. 
and they will run left right and center while you are sleeping they are awake they are saying help my son when they captured reverend Ntia Ntia is in Akwaibo Ibom Uyo when they captured him Dr. Paul Enencher said he could not sleep because it's not just because he was his spiritual son he said no he began to engage certain forces and he started making calls all around called his spiritual parents Oyedepo, they called Adeboye, called federal government people and called people and said you better look for those assassins and release Intia, Intia right now Dr. Paul Enenche went himself to acquire bomb and went to prophesy on that soil and say I command that my son be released faithful men is it not enough to pray from your house when a man leaves his house to your own to help you it's no longer just friendship it's called faithfulness pray in one minute lord bring faithful men i'm tired of false people in my life take what i'm saying seriously i'm teaching you mysteries that will make your life flawless faithful men faithful men even when they know what you have done they say it will never change my relationship with you pray there are businessmen who crash just with one scandal because everybody around them is a psychophant. There are pastors who crash with just one rumor because there are no faithful men. It's a terrible thing to live your life building men to and then realizing that they are not faithful. Make sure you are praying. Shabakalabako Sotobai. Lord, bring faithful men to my life. Hallelujah. Listen. Jesus had a crowd just like Koinonia. He was teaching them. They were there for different reasons. One time, he taught a message that was too hot for them. The Bible said they started leaving. There were only certain people, his disciples that stayed. And he asked them a question. He said, will you not also leave? And then Peter, he said, to whom shall we go? Don't you know we are sold out? To whom shall we go? He said, you alone have the word of life. And when they were crucifying Peter, theologically, historically, they kept Peter and were about to nail him. And Peter said, I have one request. I know I will die, but I'm, I'm not worthy to die in the same position with Jesus. Turn me upside down and let me die. Faithfulness unto death. I like you to pray especially those of us who are trusting God for marriage by the time all you have in your life is a man who just wants you because of figure eight you are in trouble by the time you have a woman who just likes you because you have money or you are working in shell you are in trouble lift your voice and say faithful men faithful men faithful men pray faithful men faithful men anointed to stay with your vision anointed to stay with your life hallelujah hallelujah there are many people who pray for me the prayer department prays for me my parents pray for me but there is a woman you have never seen the woman i met this woman in a meeting and the woman said she had a revelation when she listened to my message she said i have entered a covenant with god she said i'm an intercessor i've entered a covenant with god that until i go to heaven i am an intercessor for you and your ministry god is i've never given this woman one naira God is my witness. You can ask the protocol and all those who follow me. They don't even know the woman. I have never given her one naira. Once in a while, she will just send me texts and say, my son, just know your mother is praying for you. I tell you, there are times I'll be trusting God, all decisions and her text just comes. Faithful people. They will never ask for money. They will never ask and say, when you get there, it's chop by chop. They, they, they see it as a ministry to make sure you prosper i've seen people like that 
with all humility and by the grace of God one of such people is our daddy here I remember when um, there was a time that you know we're looking for the venue for ministry and all of that do you know daddy took the responsibility single-handedly there are still people here they they would ask about koinonia as if it's even their ministry it's like they are more concerned about it than me i sent a text to a few people telling them we're trusting god to buy land you know to, to to get land and all of that and one of the women sent and said i've been waiting for this she said i've been waiting for this make sure when it starts my contribution comes in she said i will be offended if my money is not part of the money that is used to buy land faithful men a pastor may have nothing but faithful men and i tell you he has more than assets he may not be able to play the keyboard well but he's faithful he will die with you are we together there are people who were once in this ministry today they have left some of them are abroad they are the ones spreading koinonia messages around i don't know them but they take those messages all around it's an anointing that is upon this ministry faithfulness i tell you we don't force people to do anything here there is a grace i saw it in certain ministries i pursued it like a man pursues water when I found it, I got it and I knew. Many of us have too many disloyal people in our lives. You are not sure of anybody close to you. They will laugh with you now. And when they turn, they can say crucify him. Let me tell you, no matter how careful you are, you cannot make men faithful by yourself. It will take a heart under God for them to vow and say, I love this man. I am loyal to him to death. There are people today, if they bring a gun to shoot, they will stand and receive that shooting for me. I know that. Not everybody, but there are people. You need that in your life. Because you are dear Facebooking people, chatting with people and saying, you are my best friend, you are my best this. They will leave you. Let me tell you something, when the going gets tough. Because in every man's life, there are valleys. There are times of challenge. How many wives left their husbands simply because for one year, there was no money they packed their load and went how many husbands left their wives and started looking for another small girl simply because after five years she could not give them a child faithfulness is important don't think i'm joking when I, when we are saying this please i want you to pray again and say lord in my life send faithful men i told you they are anointed they are commissioned they are anointed they are commissioned they don't just come they are sent. Send faithful men. Send faithful men. Hallelujah. Number six, please sit down. We're rounding up. The last key that controls undeniable results and impact in the kingdom. This is probably the greatest of the laws that I know. It's called the law of honor. Pay attention. Somebody's life is about to change. The law of honor. Matthew chapter 10, verse 41 and 42. There is an anointing for every dimension of uncommon results in the kingdom. Listen, I'm establishing the law of honor. The law of honor is predicated upon a revelation that there is an anointing. Hear me, there is a grace for every dimension in the kingdom. Results do not just happen. There are graces that activate possibilities there is a kind of grace that brings influence there is a kind of grace that brings wealth there is a kind of grace that brings freshness are we together now so that's the first thing you need to know about the law of honor that there is an anointing for every dimension of uncommon results how you know there is a grace working is when the result becomes consistent regardless of the opposing situations 
when a result becomes consistent there is a law and a grace at work number two human beings are God's reservoirs of spiritual anointings spiritual graces God keeps his anointings in men not in jars not in goya oil they can just be prophetic contacts but God's instruments God's instrument for hosting his anointing listen he that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive what? Look up. Did he say shall receive God's reward? There is something called a prophet reward. It's the reward that goes with his office. Are we together? It is the possibility he can release to you in honor of the God he serves and the office he represents and it does not just mean a man of god it's a law every time you see a man walking in a dimension consistently regardless of opposing forces there is a grace making that i have seen people in my life they are not very wealthy but they never beg i don't know what kind of grace that is the moment supplies are about to finish something else comes they never have one billion but they never lack if they need to travel abroad someone pays for the visa i've seen these people very strange people they kneel down and say lord send help from zion and men are rushing they will not bring one billion they don't have 20 cars they may just have one or two cars but you will come to their house you will never beg for bread it's a grace are we together when you see a ministry exploding in membership there is a grace when you see people moving from one dimension to the other there is a grace you can see a lady who may not even represent what supposedly most ladies may think brothers want in sisters yet you find 10 12 15 brothers flocking around and everybody saying this and that she can say no i'm in a relationship you say close that one and, and come to me I'm, I'm ready to whatever it takes and you are wondering come my brother is it that is it that this lady is gold he says me too i don't know it's a grace are we together that lady will leave that ministry and go to another one where nobody knows her and the result becomes the same there are people when they ask you something you can't say no you you swear heaven and hell and say this is the last time i'll give anybody this this lantern they just knock and say hey, Jimmy, please can you help me with it you stand up like a zombie and pick it there is a grace there is a grace i have seen this there is a grace that brings a healing anointing in the ministry it's not just by faith there are people who have these graces now listen to me please your life revolves around the levels of the possibilities you have activated i wish what i were saying were a lie i would have quietly apologized and just sat down but this is true it has changed my life it is changing my life it has changed this ministry it is changing this ministry the law of honor is the cheapest route to greatness the law of honor i used to think service was the cheapest route until i learned the law of honor my goodness you can quantum leap your destiny in one day you can veto imperfections in your life by practicing the law of honor it has worked in my life like a charm the Bible says, He that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. He that receives a fruitful woman in the name of a fruitful woman shall receive what? A fruitful woman's reward. He that receives a millionaire in the name of a millionaire will receive a millionaire's reward. The keys that made him what he is. Listen, you can, men are dimensional. 
that you are close to a man does not mean you have exhausted his dimensions there is joshua selman the human being there is joshua selman the friend there is joshua selman the man of god are we together there is joshua selman the businessman there is joshua selman the whatever it is there is a dimension you have not seen if you only know me as a man of god you receive that reward if i become your friend you will have access to certain things that people will not have are we together if you come to see me in the capacity of a man of god you can sit down i will open my fridge and serve you because you are coming as a man of god but if you come as my friend when a jimmy comes to see me whatever i'm eating is what he will just pick it and keep eating he has he is not going to ask me we will even talk about it he wants malt he can open the fridge and carry it and we'll take are we together because we are friends are we together but when we begin to talk we align to the relevant dimensions that reflect the graces we carry when i'm talking to my parents we can crack jokes but when i'm about to say something serious i switch because i'm talking to men who brought me to this world they have an anointing to speak over my life are we together you can see me greet our daddy and just crack jokes but when i'm about to talk to him i talk to him in the capacity of the grace he carries are we together now that's why you see us do certain things like some of our elderly ones we don't let them just join the queue they sit down these things are communications of honor that's why we provide buses for you after the service it's not just that we have money to throw around no it is to honor you it's a law of honor because it is our belief in this ministry that everybody seated is carrying an anointing and most of those anointings we need it and so we honor you to receive it are we together now yes you want a car you see somebody who has a car you buy fuel you are receiving him in the name of a car owner you will get a car owner's reward you see someone in a relationship you don't keep gossiping about his relationship you package a seed and sow into his life and sow into that lady's life and say whatever made you get this good man whatever made you get this good woman you got this woman when you were not born again meaning it was not your effort this is grace i need it you sow into that life you are working someone is not working and you are saying is it teacher that i'll sow into you see so you never rise one day you get up in the morning and wash the person's clothes and iron the clothes and he gets up and says ah, my roommate what is this for you say i didn't iron it as roommate i'm tired of joblessness i'm tapping into the grace that frequency in the spirit that afforded you opportunity out of the millions of jobless people you got a job how many barren people have honored those who have children they will criticize them hallelujah an anointing you have dishonored has run away from your life an anointing you have refused to bring into your life through honor maybe the reason why you are grounded hear me i'm rounding up you saw a prayer grace in koinonia and you felt please these guys just pray too loud they just shout like idiots i like the excellence i like the word but the prayer and so you find out that you pray for five minutes and snore your life away because you ignore that grace it's called the spirit of prayer and supplication you saw grace for an accurate understanding of the word and you criticize it that's why those who criticize great men never become great you see why our parents are sincere but the way they are they criticize every preacher on tv they criticize every actor they criticize every government worker when they watch news everything is criticism they insult everybody who have you insulted to your detriment whose anointing have you resented let me tell you the key to activating the law of honor number one you must believe in god number two you must believe in the vessel who is the carrier of that anointing you must not just believe in the person you must believe in the office the operation of that anointing i i pray for you that you get this we're about to pray but you need to get this for in your presence there is life 
everlasting I will reverence you Lord I will reverence you Lord I will reverence you Lord for in your presence there is life everlasting I will reverence you Lord listen I have followed men and women who have carried on common graces not just in ministry I have I have I have honored them with my life I saw into different TV ministries because Koinonia will soon have their own TV ministry. I never open my mouth and criticize anybody's TV ministry because somebody is going to be watching our own soon. So I plant a seed of honor. Are we together now? Yeah. I sow into the lives of people's children because I'm planting a seed of honor for my own children. I don't want my children begging for school fees, begging for bread. So I take care of other people's children. That's why I don't kick children and throw them out here. I take care of them. Let me tell you something. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, without fail, except for the mercy of God, he will receive it. We have criticized people. You have not started ministry. Yet every man of God does not have Rema for you. You are in for a shock. In for a big shock. You have not started business. Yet you look and say, Kai, this guy, he's talking, talking, talking. It's as if he's by luck, except he built this company. Continue talking. No reference for people's sacrifices. Let me tell you something. Behind every glory, there is a story. If you do not respect the story, and the glory you will never replicate it in your life never ever never ever there are people by the grace of god who i have never met eyeball to eyeball i've heard about them they have reproduced the grace upon my life verbatim every anointing you see is yours for the taking but the key is honor honor is not kneeling down and lifting your hands let me tell you something Honor is not kneeling down, lifting your hands. You have heard that there is a favor anointing in this ministry. I don't know whether you believe it or not. There are many people who never believe it. So you will sit down with circles of disfavor. Whereas people are recording unending testimonies of the hand of God. By the grace of God, everything we do in this ministry prospers. It's a grace. Have you tapped into it? Is it working for you? Listen. As a faithful person in this ministry, you should be a reflection, an epistle of the graces and the anointings that are here. Don't let people come from somewhere. You see how people behave when they come from other places. Their hearts are open. They are not distracted because they are coming only for a few hours or a few days and going back. But many people just sit down. Koinonia, koinonia and they enjoy and after the grace they stand up and walk away proximity to an anointing does not release it upon your life it takes honor honor is the spiritual magnet that brings graces to people me and Ejimi were watching a man of God one time and I looked at this man of God I said Kai this guy carries an uncommon grace for wealth an uncommon grace he's not so fluent he's not even so intelligent you know that there are many business principles this guy does not know. But there is, there is an uncommon grace. This guy had 10 cars in 10 weeks. One, one every week. Uncommon grace. And we said, no, this guy knows what he's saying. I will not criticize such a man. I will listen with my heart open. I can ignore his imperfections and get what I need. Listen, anointings do not flow through perfect vessels. Joshua Selman is not a perfect vessel. If you are waiting for perfection, you may never enter certain levels of grace. Ignore the imperfections and get the anointing. We are going to pray. He 
Hebrews 7 verse 7. Shabala katabara to say. I will reverence you, Lord. I will reverence you. There are things that were not in my life before. I know they were not there. I knew when they came. I honored my way through them. Honor is not human worship. Honor is not even giving somebody offering. It's just a communication. The honor is a recognition and a celebration of the hand of God and the sacrifice of that person in the secret and in the open. There are men of God I will never talk against in secret and in the open. It doesn't mean I agree with everything they do. Honestly, I don't. However, I honor them with my life. I'm not ashamed to declare that they are custodians of certain levels of grace. You receive it. We have resented people. Little results in our lives. But we are very quick to resent people. You see a lady getting married and you look and say, Ah, and she's not fine. No, the way God does his thing, self. That's what your eyes could see. What you just said in the realm of the spirit is I dissociate myself from this experience. That's what you have said. Every time you communicate dishonor, that's what you say. Lord, I dissociate myself from this experience. We are going to pray. Six laws I have given you. You will play them like a computer game and watch your life skyrocket. You will, you will tame life like a chess. You know how people play chess. Life is not magic. It's not chance. As haphazard as it is, there is a synergy. There is a rhythm to life. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you see everything I've been saying. It's one thing to hear what I'm saying, but it's another thing to see it. He says, I will stand upon my watch. I will set myself upon the tower. Right? He said, and I will see what the Lord will say to me. Some of these things I share with you freely. I got them from my own mistakes. I got them through pain. I got them through sacrifice. But they are irrefutable laws. Bring any man for me. Walk these laws and watch Satan bow. Watch gates open by themselves. I don't care whether it's gates of finances. I don't care whether it's gates of health. I don't care whether it's gates of ministry. Gates of business. There is nothing you are doing that has not been done before. Ask those who master this key. If he's setting up a company, you are not the first to do it. If it's marriage, you are not the first to do it. If it's barrenness, you are not the first to be barren. The day your light comes, that becomes your day of salvation. Something I have ignored. I used to do a lot of things and allow people punish me. There was a man of God that set me free. Just one revelation from him. I could go and borrow money and come and help somebody to be careless and run into debt at the expense of the carelessness of someone because I felt I had to be everything to everybody. And one day, one man of God delivered me. His name is Dr. Mike Modok. Just one statement. He said, never do to people what only God can do to them. Ah, that was it. That was my deliverance. I found out that I was becoming God to many people. So I was taking God's responsibility in the lives of so many people. And it was killing me. And I said, no, rather than being God, let me start leading men to God. And it gave me freedom. There are some of us who are always paying bills for people who are not serious. You give them 20,000, they go and destroy it. You give them 100,000 for a business, they throw it. And you keep doing that. It's running the finances of your home. You are being God to them. Lead them to God. Teach them the principles. Give them access to responsibility. Rise up on your feet. Let's pray. Hallelujah. For the things you have done And the battles you have won Only you are worthy of our praise We magnify
For the things you have done and the battles you have won, only you, only you are worthy of my praise. We magnify, magnify your name for the things. Psalms 107. I already sense the power of God. We'll just read this and go straight into the ministrations. Psalms 107. We're going to read verse 6 and then we'll read 28 to 30. I want to show you another mystery. Two mysteries. One is gratitude. The second, listen, is a mystery. I've seen this thing many times in the Bible. I want you to read it. One, two, read. Stop. Just the A part. One more time. It says, then they cried unto the Lord. There is a mystery when a man cries to the Lord. I used to think it meant just lifting your voice and be loud until God opened my eyes. Every time you see them say in their distress, they cried unto God. In their distress, crying unto God is more than talking. Crying unto God first starts with a revelation that Lord, if you don't help me in this issue, I am finished. It's a revelation. For as long as you have options, you will never see God arise in your life until you exhaust all your options and you come to a point where you say lord they gave me the drugs in the hospital but i acknowledge that is crying unto god that you say lord you are my priority if you don't give me a husband i cannot get one if you don't give me a job there is no job for me crying to the lord is more than just saying oh god help me blind Bartimaeus cry and this was his cry thou son of david or not thou miracle worker i know you i know your power will you pass me by and leave me in my distress like this i'm blind but i've heard about you that you are the god who can wipe the tears of people i've heard about you that you are the one who makes the barren to sing i've heard about you that you are the one who raised Job back I've heard about you it says they cried unto the Lord whenever you are in trouble stop discussing the key is to cry unto God we have prayer requests here many of us are standing trusting God to touch us the key tonight is to cry unto God and the Bible says he delivered them out of their distresses verse 28 28 very quickly one more time let's read one to read again then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble and what did he do he bring them out of their distresses next verse he make the storm a calm so that the waves tear off the waves that are killing you that looks like you will not survive he says God has the ability there is something he can tell that trouble it must hear his voice next verse he says then as a result they are glad because they be quiet so he bring them where unto their desired heaven listen God knows your intentions God knows your desire he has the ability to bring you to where your desired heaven but the key after gratitude you are authorized to cry to cry to the lord is not an embarrassment when you cry you are saying oh god let your goodness and your mercy speak at this point is not because of what i have done at this point is if it is with my intellect if it's with my money if it's with my connection i have failed I cry to you in my distress. In the next one minute before I minister, 
we are going to cry to God. Listen, I told you crying to God is a revelation. A revelation that acknowledges him as your only source. Tonight you are going to say, Lord, you are the only one. You are the only one who can heal me. I know this. And tonight I cry to you. The Bible says he can calm the storm. He can calm the storm. Oh yes, he can. Lift your voice and cry to your maker. Thou son of David. Let your goodness and your mercy speak over me tonight. Pray. Lord, there is nothing new about my situation. You have done it before. The Bible is full of records of your faithfulness. How you parted the Red Sea before people. How overnight you turned the captivity of men and women. Pray. Lord, I don't know how you will do it. But I know you can do it. They cried unto the Lord in their trouble. He said, call upon me in the day of trouble. Cry to the Lord. My rent has expired. I'm not working. I have no idea. But I cry to you. I have multiple carryovers. I don't know what will happen to me. But I cry to you. Thou, O oh God, the lifter up of my head. The one who is able to change my story. I have not come to an idol. It is within your power to help me. Oh, thou Ebenezer, arise for me. You are my Ebenezer, the helper of man. God can help you. Listen to me. God can help you. God can help you. They cried unto the Lord in their distress. Cry unto the Lord and watch what he will do in your life. Don't give him options. Don't give him options. Lord, you are my only source. I cry to you. Pray. My only hope of entering into my desired heaven. Some trust in horses. Some trust in chariots. But we will trust in the name of our God. Lord, step in to the impossible, to the impossible. Lift your voice and sing inside and outside. No stepping to the impossible, to the impossible. Come on, let your faith rise tonight. No. Lord, step in, Lord, step in to the impossible, to the impossible. One more time. Lord, step in, Lord, step in. Step hallelujah the Lord is healing a lady right now please check yourself and you just come out to testify before we continue I'm seeing a lady you came here with severe pain on your neck check it now check it now the Lord is touching you the Lord is touching you I'm seeing an elderly man in this place um, you've been having pains 
towards the lower abdominal region the lord has just touched that man right now he's an elderly man i don't know where that person is please testify check yourself and immediately you find out you are healed make your way to the front make your way to the front god is touching people right now i don't know who i'm seeing an ear god is touching someone's ear it's like i don't know if it's an ear issue but god is touching it right now god is touching it right now god is touching it right now please check yourself and make your way right now right now let's just have two or three of those people god is touching it right now right now doing a miracle for somebody um i'm seeing somebody that has i don't know if it's um i don't know what to call it but it's like a serious stomach issue it comes and hooks you literally you are gasping for breath when that happens to you it's like it literally holds you check yourself now you will find out that the lord has touched you make your way to the front very quickly you can make your way right here miracles are happening come on give jesus praise miracles are happening miracles are happening god is touching people right now can you give jesus praise god is touching people god is touching people right now i'm seeing someone with an eye problem you see like a black object it comes and goes it's like a it's, it looks like a needle like a black object you'll be looking at people and then you will see it this has happened for a while but god has touched you right now who is that person make your way to the front right now i'm seeing someone's left leg outside in the overflow there is someone with a left leg issue left leg is like you came towards the, the, the uh, this area where i'm holding i'm seeing the power of god touch that area check it right now check it right now and confirm your healing and make your way to the front check it right now confirm your healing make your way to the front hallelujah have they checked themselves sir? you've checked yourself okay so quickly we'll just take two or three you can turn please come up come up let them come up when you come you can stand please come up man come up sir go ahead just tell us quickly straight to the point praise the lord uh, i have an ear issue and it normally scratch me sometimes okay and i'm feeling better by completely give right jesus now. praise hallelujah give jesus praise it never returns to you in the name of jesus yes sir please let's celebrate jesus celebrate what he's doing for some, yes for some years i have been experiencing pain here pain at yes. the lower abdominal yes, region yes. yes you know i gave now, a word of knowledge yes. that there was somebody in lower abdomen. Better. and how, better. Better. how about better. now exactly it's better. in the name of jesus christ lord we declare that it is perfected wow the power of god is coming on you it's perfected right now never to return to you in the name of jesus please check it sir check it check it right now check it it's Check getting it. better. Yes. I'm feeling better. I'm feeling you will better. be perfected in the name of Amen. the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Give Jesus praise. Praise the Lord. For the past two weeks now, I've been having ear pain. Ear it's pain. A, it's an attack. Okay. I have cold. I have catar. So this thing blocked my ear. I don't used to hear very well. So now I'm I'm okay. Completely. Yes. Madam, what? The Lord is bringing increase for you. I'm seeing attack. I'm seeing a serious attack. Your money has gone down. Yes. Because this, this, I'm seeing this has to do with. Yes. I don't know if you sell hair or you are doing I, something. I have salon in center. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing it's like an attack. This thing yes, has gone down. People are not even coming the way it used to be yes. before again. Is that true? Yes. The Lord is saying, I should tell you in this miracle service, a restoration comes for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the restoration comes for you right now. In the name of Jesus, give Jesus praise. God is visiting situations right now. Visiting situations right now. Go ahead, please, quickly. I want to thank God because I've been having serious pain on my neck at times. Neck pain? Yes, okay, the lady I said with neck pain, how long? It's like, it's for months. It comes and goes. At times, it's like my entire head, my ear, it affects my ear, but... When you were speaking, I, I just turned and I felt it was gone. You felt it was gone. Hallelujah. Now, there is a lady, while they were giving a testimony, there's a lady here. You felt like a cold sensation. 
something just came upon you right now it's a miracle that god has given you who is that person come out you are in this row where are you come you felt like a cold sensation something just came over you come come this night god is bringing restoration oh father in the name of jesus let your anointing bring restoration for her right now right now in the name of jesus christ tremendous restoration i'm seeing a crown being put upon your head are you together are you together i'm seeing a crown oh you felt the same thing i'm praying for you madam the lord is averting cs the lord is averting cs because you see the anointing is on you the lord is averting cs i'm seeing a spirit standing by the theater and i'm seeing that this is even supposed to destroy this baby that they say this baby comes out and is affected but the anointing of the spirit is upon you right now as i'm speaking and i release the power of god right now let that demonic substance out of her now out of her in the name of jesus christ i see miracles everywhere miracles everywhere miracles everywhere your family here is the time for the visitation where is our family please come there is a whole deliverance for a family that God is doing here right now I see that family please where is our daddy and our mommy please appreciate them as they come enough of the nonsense of darkness please celebrate them as they come miracles everywhere miracles Miracles everywhere right now, right now, right now. Right now. Right Hallelujah. Now. Sir, I'm looking at you and I'm seeing a cause. This is what I'm seeing. As I look at you, the Lord is showing me this is a cause. Number one, it has tied down your finances completely down. This thing is so embarrassing, it has tied down everything. I don't know who is it in your family that has dreams. I see dreams of someone chasing somebody. I don't know which of your children or who now but i'm seeing one of those people have dreams that's their daughter you see the power of god touching her she's their daughter she's the person with this case i'm mentioning i'm seeing dreams and it's like people pursuing the person this thing started right from your family and this is already following this lady because i'm seeing now that the devil wants to put fibroid in her stomach it's starting now as pain I, I remove that fibroid right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I cause that seed of fibroid by the power of the Holy Spirit I'm seeing this woman crying before God in prayer this is what I'm seeing this woman has been a defense I'm seeing her crying before God and saying Lord will you not wipe our tears in this family but tonight we see miracles everywhere Miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Right now, right now, right now, right now. We see miracles everywhere. We see miracles everywhere. We see miracles everywhere. Right now, right now. Sir, there are many people who can help you. But every time they want to indicate helping you something just comes and nobody is willing to help you because i'm looking at you in the realm of the spirit i'm seeing a body but i'm not seeing a face this thing has covered your glory whoever is supposed to help you misunderstands you and for some reason they uh, they don't help again hallelujah who is adamu i'm hearing a name adamu adamu i'm hearing something that has to do with adamu Adamu, please help, help those on the Adamu, I'm hearing Adamu. Who is that? Adamu. Adamu. Huh? Where is your father? The person I'm talking about, his father's name is the one that is Adamu. Huh? Adam. What's your father's son name? Adamu. Adamu. Yes. God is giving Adamu a miracle. He's your father, right? Where is he? Adam, Nasara State. In Nasara State. Yes, sir. Because this enchantment that is done against your family enough is enough it's part of your prayer request right yes, number five six uh, number two and three yes, 
number two and three prayer requests. Yes, sir. Look at it there. Yes, that's sir. it. Number two and number three. That's what you wrote. Lord Read it. Miracle Read it. Miracle in your family. Yes, that's what I'm reading, what you are writing. And God is giving a miracle. Yes, a big miracle to Adam. Miracles everywhere. I see miracles everywhere. Right now. Right now. Miracles everywhere. Love is a miracle. Miracles everywhere. We see miracles. The Spirit of God is ministering to me. I'm seeing the anointing of the Spirit. I'm looking at a map and I'm seeing the Spirit of God going to Yola. Yola. A miracle is happening in Yola and it's going to this lady's family. This lady, right? I'm seeing a miracle. But there are two other people from Yola. From Yola. I see the power of God moving. Two people from Yola. It will come like a tornado upon you. It's a miracle that God is doing right there. There is a lady's elder sister who has been barren. I'm seeing the number three. Three years. Barren. Barren. Help them. That lady is from Yola. She's an usher. She's walking. But the spirit of God. I'm seeing is a wicked demon. This is what I'm seeing. That has been oppressing her family. I don't know if she's from Yola or not. But I'm seeing that God is doing a serious miracle. Sir. I'm going to pray for you. Mommy. I will minister to you. Madam. The Lord is saying I should tell you that the crying is over. The crying is over. Right now as I speak, the power of God is coming on you. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, the crying is over. Right now, the angel of the Lord is pouring something that looks like oil upon your head. Pouring it right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Pouring what looks like vials of oil. Now I curse this spirit. I address you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let this family go now. 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 This curse that has tied down the family. Even the lawful captive shall be delivered. He said for I will contend with them that contend with you. Right now. The power of God is touching people. I see deliverance. 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 Deliverance fire. Lift your hands everybody. Let's just interrupt this. Deliverance fire right now. It will start touching people at the count of three. Father, the angels of God. There are many angels in this place. Bringing deliverance for families. At the count of three. Let that fire come right now. One, two, three. Receive it. Right now, right now, right now, right now. Makaparatata. Sheketetete. Bring them out. Lekete pratata. Deliverance for families outside i'm seeing the angels of the lord go outside outside the power of god is moving it's like fire coming on families it's like fire it's like fire it's like fire it's like fire, it's like fire. we see miracles everywhere miracles everywhere Miracles everywhere right now. Right now, we see miracles everywhere. We see miracles, miracles everywhere. We see miracles, miracles everywhere. Right now, right now. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, Father. Where are those families you showed me in the place of prayer? That from the village. Now, I'm not one who just talks so much about village. But this one is from the village. I see an attack at the count of three. One, two, three. From the village. Those arrows back to sender. Shakatata. Leketata. Reketatata. From the village. I see enchantments. From the village. I see altars. I see covens. I set them on fire. I set them on fire. I set them on fire. 
they are calling your names from the village from the village enchantments witchcraft death outside outside fire is falling what fire is falling fire is falling from the village speakings of death enchantments of death Yahweh. 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 The name above all names. Yahweh. We call you Yahweh. I'm ready to pray for you now i didn't just leave you i need to pray for you my god there is massive deliverance going on in this place my dear lift your hands where you are an angel of the lord is touching you right now right now mama an angel of the lord is touching you he's doing something in your husband's life your husband's life there is a miracle that is happening Madam, your time for a miracle has come. Come. This woman, this woman wearing pink. No, no, no. I mean, that one. The one turning back. Yes, you, madam, come. Your time for a serious visitation has come. Let's stretch our hands towards daddy. Bring her. Be delivered now. I curse that spirit. Go! Stretch our hands towards daddy and mommy. Let's pray for them. Father, this plague must stop. I saw a curse. It was looking like a hollow over your head. It follows you everywhere you go and brings bad luck to your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, it's over. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I announce a new season. I announce a new season. Mommy, the spell is broken. Broken, 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 broken. In the name of Jesus Christ. Sir, I hold your hands in the name of Jesus and I announce to you that it's a new season. You will go back and experience dramatic turnaround. In the name of Jesus Christ. Don't think it will come from all the channels you are planning. Unusual sources of breakthrough. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Madam, I want to pray for you. Do you have a daughter? Is she here? One is here. I'm seeing one of your child here. Where is the person? A girl. A lady. A girl, yes. A lady. Where is she? Please call her name. Let her come. Daughter, where are you? Who is the person? She's wearing something like traditional dressing. Who is that? Come. This has been your desire that God will visit your family. Right? It's been your desire, it's been your prayer yes, sir. that God yes. will visit your family. Yes, sir. And tonight God has chosen to step in. See, it's an awesome thing when the light of God turns to you. Then you know that your situation has come to an end. I mustn't call you. It's not just by word of knowledge. It's not just by word of knowledge. lady is going to vomit something i'm seeing something that looks like a snake moving in her stomach this is like i don't know if it's poison this is something that has been put to this lady i cursed that devil i cursed you back to hell back to hell from where you came from 
Hallelujah. Mommy, please stand up. Let me pray for you, man. You can stand up, please. I want to pray for you. God is going to bring dramatic breakthrough to your life. Please, I want you to note it. Dramatic breakthrough. It will so surprise you. Hold my hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let captivity come to an end. In the name of Jesus, captivity comes to an end. I release supernatural breakthrough. Supernatural breakthrough. Supernatural breakthrough in the name of Jesus. And for you, supernatural breakthrough. Mama, I pray. The Lord told me that the tears have come to an end. He's wiping your tears. Father, thank you for your word. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Remember not the former things the Lord says I should tell you. In this season, he's doing new things. He will change the heart of your husband in a way that you never imagined. He will do this for his glory. The spell of bad luck over your life is broken. Bad luck. There's something about your life that makes people hate you. It's a spirit. And there are people here. Lift your hands, everybody. I'm praying for you. Whatever makes people hate you for no reason. I want you to know that it's not normal. You will see what will happen right now. There are people here. I know that people have those kinds of things. But there are people with those things. It's like an aura on you. As I was ministering to her, the Lord said, minister to the house. Father, where are they? Right now in the name of Jesus. Let the anointing locate them. Inside and outside. That spell of bad luck. Right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. Justina, the Lord is bringing miracles to your family. Miracles to your family. I'm seeing a lady from, is it Oka? Oka? That should be East. I'm, I'm, Oka? Is there anyone from like that? I'm seeing a lady. Our minister generally will pray for the sick now, but I just want to flow. Oka? Oka? Is there someone like that? Please, if you are like that, you can make your way to the front. The Lord wants me to pray for that family. My dear, you with a white hair tie, that lady, you turning back, lift your hands where you are. I don't know what it is that I'm seeing, but God is destroying an embargo over your life and family. Lord Jesus, I destroy it right now. In the name of Jesus, where you are standing, I destroy it by the power of the Holy Spirit. You are from there? You are from Oka? Where is that? Anambra State. Anambra State. Yes. I'm going to pray for you. You're also from there? Huh? Make your way to the front. You are from there too. Three of you. Look at me. You cannot be a victim, you and your sisters, of the wickedness of people in the village. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hold my hands. Father, it must end. This must end. It must end by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. This is, this is, I'm seeing enchantment. This is, this is witchcraft to produce consistent failure in life. You and your sisters, I pray for you. Father, you are going to visit them in this season. You are going to visit them in this season. In the name of Jesus. I want to minister to you. You are from there too. Come stand. The Lord gave me that word and said to minister to the people. As I lay my hands and minister to you. I want you to know that everything that does not represent God. Huh? And everyone pursuing you in your dream. And disturbing you. It must end in the name of Jesus Christ. For you. There is, there is, I'm seeing something that looks like a crown in your head. We must remove it because it's not God that put that crown. Out in the name of Jesus Christ, that devil is a liar. Take it off of her in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Where is your mother, my dear? Huh? Abia State. Abia State. We are going to pray for you. Tell your mother that a deliverance is coming for her, then a breakthrough. Deliverance first, then breakthrough. For the deliverance, she will see it in a dream. It's like something will be chasing her to catch her and she will see somebody who will snatch her out. It's a dream connoting deliverance. 
Father, visit this family. Out! In the name of Jesus Christ. The student here. Huh? Yes. We must pray for you. So that the spirit that destroys men when they are about to finish. Huh? In your family, we must stop it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Glorify yourself, O oh God. I curse this spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lift your hands, everyone. Before I begin to minister to the sick, God is bringing deliverance to families right now. We are going to shout Jesus at the count of three. This is not just to you, but God is stepping into families. Some of you never knew that what is happening physically in your family is as a result of all kinds of things. Devils. Lift your hands, everybody. At the count of three, you shout Jesus at the top of your voice. And the power of God will move mightily in this place. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that you step into families and end every oppression and every captivity. Right now, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit, every family, shakatatata, under any demonic siege, my goodness, the power of God is already touching people. Right now, at the count of three, let that shout be like a code in the spirit. One, two, three. Be delivered now. 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 Altars be broken. Altars be broken over families. Over families. Inside and outside. And those following online. I break it right now every family under any spell every family that's right Kappa, takata. bring them out Shakatatata. every family under any spell oh you must leave them you must leave them I speak to those spirits hear my voice in the name of Jesus there is no hiding place for you you must go you must go you must go. It's time for their deliverance. You must go. Hallelujah. My goodness, God is doing miracles right now. God is so, help that lady please. Help them. Sisters, lift your hands. I want to pray for just the sisters. Something remarkable will happen right now. Remarkable. There is a spirit that puts women in bondage because when one woman is in bondage it can affect a thousand men there are ladies oh my goodness the fire of God will move not small sisters lift your hands Lord by fire as the sisters cry that spirit that seraph that follows ladies and causes them visiting them in dreams as you shout Jesus my goodness, I pray that those fallen spirits that will not let you go, that did not keep their original estate, they will be judged right now. Father, locate every one of these sisters. Right now, one, two, shout Jesus. Right now, right now, right now. Right now, right now. Those spirits, go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. Shaka, ta, ta, ta. Lift your hands. There are people here. Strange dreams. Strange dreams in the night. You sleep in the night and you have all kinds of strange dreams. From men or women or animals coming to sleep with you. Or people tying your legs. And you see what is happening in the day. Whether you believe it or not is not the issue. I want to settle those things right now. Lift your hands. Lord, where are these people? From the dream realm. From the realm of the spirit. As you shout the name Jesus. Anyone under this condition. Some of you, that's what is responsible for masturbation. Some of you, that's what is responsible for pornography. Some of you, that's what is responsible for delay. Lift your hands. Father, those spirits that use the realm of dreams and visions 
and manipulate destinies manipulate the stars of your people at the count of three we set them on fire fire comes upon you now many guys will be affected one two three Oh, I bring you deliverance in the name of Jesus. I cause those spirits, causing delay. You must leave now, 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 now. Shaba ba ba ba, shake te te te, kapra ta ka ta ta ta, shake te 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 te, reke te te te, go 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 go. Watch what they do. Shaka ta 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 ba na na ba, em protoko to pariata. That spell of delay must leave. Hallelujah. Lift your voice in one minute. I'd like you to pray and cause delay from your life. In the next one minute, open your mouth and say enough is enough. I must move forward. Pray. Please pray. Take it seriously. It's called a miracle service. It's called a miracle service. Pray. Lord, I'm tired of delay. yes 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 prophesy i'm moving forward this is the ninth month by the blood of jesus i'm moving forward i'm moving forward under this anointing hallelujah hallelujah i like you to shout after me Say in the name of Jesus. Every gate and every obstacle standing between me and the next level by the blood of Jesus, I bring those gates down. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Gates of limitations standing before me and my desired heaven gates of limitation standing before me in the name of Jesus gates of limitation standing before me and my desired heaven outside make sure you are praying pray you will return with a testimony you are praying under a corporate anointing hallelujah Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Everything that belongs to me and is not yet in my life in this season by the power of faith I command them to manifest. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and pray. Come on Koinonia. Everything. Every lifting every glory that belongs to me and has refused to manifest by the power of faith even God who quickened the dead and called those things that be not as though they were hallelujah Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Every legal access. Every claim. The devil has. Over my life. Over my family. By the blood of Jesus. I declare that I'm free. By the blood of Jesus. I command my liberty. I declare. That the price 
for my freedom has been paid therefore satan stay off my life open your mouth and begin to pray stay off my life the price has been paid by the death of jesus every cause every yoke every spell every enchantment by the blood of jesus pray Hallelujah. I want you to listen to me carefully. I'm doing this by the Spirit. Listen, many breakthroughs are happening to people just from this simple prayer. I wish that God could open your eyes to see the things that are happening to people. You are, this is not just your normal prayer. You are under a heavy anointing. Listen, human beings have prophetic atmospheres. The ark of God came into the house of Obed-Edom and brought him good. Jonah entered a boat and made people to be destroyed. Listen, some of you are good people, but you are carrying a spiritual atmosphere that brings bad luck to you and everybody connected to you that's what prophets sometimes will see and because they don't have discernment they call people witches and wizards they are not witches and wizards they are sincere people but they carry a spiritual climate that everywhere they go it makes certain things to happen do you understand now some of you are sincere people but you are carrying atmospheres that makes everything around your life to fail we are going to pray say after me in the name of Jesus by the blood of Jesus this is strong prayer this simple prayer you are saying you will see the result instantly I like you to pray and say every atmosphere that I carry that does not come from God and is responsible for bad luck and misfortune in my life tonight I declare let that atmosphere change lift your voice and pray seriously lift your voice and pray seriously every negative atmosphere kaparatata pray miracles are happening pray every negative atmosphere pray that brings bad luck I may be a sincere person but it brings repeated misfortunes I challenge it whether ancestral whether territorial I challenge it I change my spiritual climate by the blood of Jesus hallelujah two more prayer points and we'll pray for the sick hallelujah we're going to pray a prayer of restoration do you believe in restoration nothing is ever truly lost it only leaves your presence I like us to pray yeah that's the song everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen one more time forget about your situation just prophesy just prophesy you may not know how it will happen 
Just prophesy. One more time. Prophesy. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Shout it, say in the name of Jesus. All the years, all the fortunes, every opportunity, every access that has been lost in my life by the mercy of God, I command them to come back to me. Go ahead and pray. This is a serious prayer point. All the years, all the fortunes, all the opportunities, all the access that have passed your life. Pray like Samson. Pray like Hezekiah. Pray. Let there be a restoration. And I will restore to you the years that the canker worm, the palmer worm, the caterpillar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to pray the last prayer point. Listen. There are spirit entities that challenge and haunt the destiny of people in the realm of the spirit. When Jesus was born, certain men saw his star from the east and they started following that star. And the moment they announced to Herod, a king is born. Herod said, ah, a king. He said, please find where he is and tell me so that I will come and worship him. But his intention was to kill him. You are going to pray over your destiny. Please take this prayer point seriously. Shout it, say in the name of Jesus. I declare that my destiny is secured by the blood. Every act of witchcraft that has tied down my destiny right now by the blood of Jesus. Release it now. Pray, pray. Release my destiny. Release my destiny. My prophetic potential. Release it. Release it. Hallelujah. Prophesy after me, say in the name of Jesus. This is my year of the rain. It's a new dimension for me. I'm breaking every limitation. Say it again. I'm breaking every limitation. And I declare that in this remaining part of the year, an anointing comes upon my life that causes me to triumph that causes me to excel go ahead and pray it lord is my year of the rain an anointing comes upon my life a speedy walk by the holy ghost a speedy walk of restoration a speedy walk Hallelujah. We're going to do two things at the same time right now. Listen. If there is any trace of sickness and infirmity in your body, it's time for it to die. Are we together now? Are we together? Now, please just address these people. We're going to have all those people come and line up. While that is happening, please, I beg you, if you do not write anything in your prayer request, please, if you need papers, maybe the ushers can pass it. We are going to be praying on everybody's request. Those on Facebook, some of your loved ones, you are permitted to switch on your, switch on your phone. 
and tell them please send in your prayer request because God is about to do something right now while you are doing that be praying in tongues everybody be praying in tongues while sick people all those who brought sick people make your way to the front very quickly please very quickly all those trusting God for healings and miracles please just line up everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything devil is a liar he must Everything let you go tonight that was stolen shall be restored unto you hallelujah we don't just lay hands on people i know that it takes a lot of time but it's the way god is directing us it's not just ordinary hand laying it's a prophetic point of contact some of you are coming out for sickness but the truth about it is that there is an oppression of darkness is that the mama with cancer okay no no problem no problem she can come if she cannot stand just give her a seat let her sit down please those who are weak and cannot stand please you can give them a seat so that they don't collapse the, the woman with cancer if she, if she cannot come just administer to her. everything that was lost make sure you are writing your prayer request please everything Hallelujah. All of you that are coming out, I want you to know that we are patient enough to minister to us. There are all kinds of ministries. This ministry is like a spiritual factory. It's like a spiritual workshop. It's where we dirty our hands on the job. And as I minister to us, please, I want our hearts to be open. Don't just stand watching the power of God touch people. The moment I lay hands on you and minister to you, I want you to receive. You can go back to your seat. Some of you will be under the anointing. It doesn't matter as i pray for you you don't have to scrounge i will lay hands on everybody it's going to be a quick walk it will take time please when you write your request pass it to the ushers in case there are things listen listen let me teach you how to maximize this prayer point don't just write things carelessly while you are writing be praying in tongues because the spirit of god will bring into your mind bring you into remembrance it may even be a matter that is not your own you heard the story of the gentleman dropped a prayer point and nine months later they are coming with twins there is nothing god cannot do father in the name of jesus i pray over your people there are powers tying down their destinies but you have put this miracle service as a prophetic platform let there be miracles go ahead all of us we can join praying in tongues while i pray for these people occasionally worship team you will help us lord we give you praise in the name of jesus christ in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look at this. I don't know. They can't see it on screen. It's not clear. This is a leg that is bent. Father, do a miracle. They didn't fix it well. In the name of Jesus. Right now. Let the power of God do a miracle on this leg. In the name of Jesus. Almighty God. You know me, my Lord. You know me, my Lord. Out! Now you be God. Almighty God. You know me, my Lord. 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 Now you be God. Now you be God. Almighty God. Almighty God. You know me, my Lord. You know me, my Lord.
point number two lord i take full delivery of everything you package uniquely for me tonight lift your voice i will not miss out on anything hallelujah who brought this woman please huh? what's the issue what's wrong hallelujah we'll soon be rounding up let's just hear no 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 keep us standing. what's wrong paralyzed mama can she talk yes mama for how long because I paralyzed did. yes i went to the house and met she can't walk on her own she can't walk very well mama in the name of jesus christ i curse this spirit it's okay in the name of jesus mama look at me in jesus name lift your hand lift it go don't look at, just lift it put it down lift it again paralyzed hand look at this look at this mama clear the way for her in the name of jesus christ walk come don't hold her come 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 turn around turn around walk come 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 on, give Jesus it's praise. Miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Paralyze. Miracles everywhere. Right now. Right. We see miracles. We see miracles. We see miracles. Right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus. the power of paralysis it never returns to you again in the name of Jesus you are the son that brought her your, she's not your mom yes. but you brought her yes. I pray for you may you never lack helpers in your life because you are a young man you are not related to her yet you carried mama out of compassion this miracle is because of you I'm laying hands on you and I prophesy to you all the days of your life may help us be around you like this in the name of Jesus Christ for as long as your eyes can see the sun you will find the helper in the name of Jesus Christ God bless you celebrate mama God bless you there's a miracles everywhere make sure you submit your prayer request everywhere you're in ministry I want you to come out I, I don't mean you want to do ministry you are actively in ministry come and stand here it's time for you to take fresh fire please if you come out and you are not a minister I'll send you back I assure you don't embarrass yourself if you're a minister and you know not just that you sense the call of God please don't embarrass yourself 
We are going to pray for everybody. But if you are a minister, come, go ahead. Don't be afraid. We're in a season of God's glory. Please listen. We're in a season of God's remarkable grace. It takes signs and wonders. Not just grammar and story. The Bible is not waiting for the explanation of the sons of God. For the manifestation. Please, I'd like you to believe. I'm going to do this very fast. The Lord has instructed me. Immediately after we do that, all visitors, visitors alone. I will not lay hands on you, but I'll pray for you. And then we'll pray for the request, prophesy, and we're out. We'll do all this within the next 10 minutes so that we're done. Father, I pray. It's not by might, it's not by power. Lord, as I lay hands upon your servants, let something new, something divine, my God, I pray, activate the gifts of the Spirit in them. Activate the operations of signs and wonders. Let utterance be given unto them. Let their lives, oh God, produce results. Results, oh God. Results. Signs. Wonders. Miracles. By your hand. Take the fire. 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 Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. New levels. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. New dimensions. Fresh grace. My goodness. Fire is falling. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh grace. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire, fresh fire, fresh grace, fresh anointing, new anointing, new dimension. Gifts of the Spirit. Visions, dreams, prophecies, multiplied graces. I prophesy to all of you, let it be a new season. In the name of Jesus. New season. New season. New season. I empower you for a new dimension in the spirit. I empower you. Fresh grace. Fresh grace. Please stretch your hands towards the prayer request. Unto thee that answers prayers shall all flesh come. Please stretch your hands. Is a prophetic instruction God gave us we have seen amazing testimonies if there are still people left please let them come let them drop it very quickly in one minute I like you to begin to pray Lord it's time to turn my story around my goodness as we pray miracles will begin to happen to people right in the crowd right in the crowd as I'm touching the request something is happening to you something is happening I'm seeing angels lightning all over all over all over father in the name of jesus we pray go ahead and pray everyone
I release angels. I activate angels. I release angels. I activate angels. In the crowd right now. I turn this request to testimonies. I activate angels. Lord, solve problems, solve problems. Let burdens be removed. I activate angels. I activate angels. Hearken, O God, we cry unto you, O God of Jacob, we cry unto you, O God of Israel, unto thee that answers prayer, shall all flesh come, we cry unto you, we call upon your name, call the night of people into day, turn their morning into joy, O God. Hallelujah. I tell you, mighty miracles are happening. I see all kinds of miracles happening in the realm of the spirit. Father, turn these requests into testimonies. The way I walk on them, oh God, these problems remain under our feet forever in the name of jesus christ under our feet forever in the name of jesus christ all our visitors please come out quickly if you're a visitor here you're a visitor this is your first time Hallelujah. The Lord spoke to us last year. He said we should prophesy and pray over the visitors. Some of you have traveled kilometers. You have traveled from different states of this nation, risking yourself through the night. Please make sure you come. Clear the way for them. You are a visitor. This is your first time you are coming here. Make your way to the front. Let's celebrate them. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see what I'm saying, people? The number of visitors that troop in every week into Zaria for Koinonia is getting so much. We have to find something to start doing around your regions so that we save some of you transporting yourself. Maybe we'll open a branch of Koinonia in all those places. Maybe we'll come to your village. Hallelujah. But seriously, we're trusting God for instructions for the next level. And I'm sure that very soon he's going to speak. But I perceive that very soon there's going to be a lot of expansion because of what God is doing. Hallelujah. Are you glad about that? Let's celebrate Jesus. God has brought you here. Your life will never be the same. Please lift your hands. Father, you have brought these people all the way. Some of them with burdens. Some of them coming to catch fire. I stretch my hands towards you. Kaborato shatabaladaba. Nandekele koroto suto prashia. My goodness, I see impartations happening to people. Those of you standing, I'm seeing impartations. It's like rain, rain touching people. That's what I see. These are showers of blessings, showers of miracles. I prophesy to you from tonight. Help them, help them, help them, help them, please. I prophesy to you. Step into new levels. In the name of Jesus Christ, step into new dimensions. This is Koinonia, a place of encounter. It's not just the name of a meeting. It's the name and the dimension of the operation of the Spirit. We bless you with hunger for God. We bless you with passion for the things of the Spirit. I'm praying for you. You will go back with such fire. You will go back with such passion you will not recover from. I pray that everything that has not been working in your life, let it be activated tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I welcome all of you. Thank you so much for coming. This is Koinonia, a meeting put together by Eternity Network International. We're here every Friday.
um, this is not our usual venue our venue is Christ Gospel Church at New Extension but we thank you for coming I bless you in the name of Jesus and I'm praying for you from the depth of my heart and on behalf of everyone in this ministry and the many who are joining us online that you will return with a strange miracle in the name of Jesus you will return with a strange miracle some of you even before you get home your miracles will be waiting for you some of you this night you will have dreams and encounters and the veil over your eyes will be open some of you this night God will show you what has been happening in your life God will show you direction I see God giving a lot of you direction direction for the next level you will hear his voice very accurately in the vision of the night in the vision of the night he will show you in the name of Jesus Christ we bless you for those of you who have never been here I want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands they'll have your details outside very quickly and then you come and join us those of you who have been here and we have received you you can just go back to your seat with a blessing but those of you who have never been here you've not put down your name we need your names and details I want you to make your way here in the name of Jesus everybody rise as we receive the last prophecy for the meet now you be God God. You know be my news. You know be my Now him be God. You know be God. You know Two more times. Now you be God. Praise the Lord. Tomorrow morning we are off to Kogi State. We are going to be tearing down the walls of darkness. Trust God to set that territory free. Pray for us and if you come from Kogi, stand by us and tell and let's trust God to really do something apostolic in that land in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now please, this for me, you always hear me say this. I consider this to be the most important part of the meeting because this is where everybody gets to receive the creative power of the spoken word the creative power of prophecy this is where the word of God comes into you like a drug and literally literally alters you and so I want you to receive with your heart open hallelujah please receive with your heart open in the name of Jesus Christ as I pray for you, I want you to receive by shouting a resounding amen. No more tears in the name of Jesus. No more tears in the name of Jesus. I prophesy no more tears in the name of Jesus. No more tears in the name of Jesus. No more tears in the name of Jesus. No more tears, no more tears. No more tears. No more tears in the name of Jesus. These hands that are lifted, I prophesy. May a supernatural anointing come upon it. Let it begin to produce extraordinary results. In the name of Jesus Christ. Extraordinary results. I pray for everyone due for promotion. And every of your loved ones due for promotion in the name of Jesus we cause the embargo stopping their promotion and we prophesy promotion there will be testimonies of promotion the power of God is touching people everyone and every family called jobless I feel like fire on my hands as I'm about to pray this Please help them. I feel like fire on my hands. Everyone represented here and every family called jobless. Right now in the name of Jesus, I release an anointing for supernatural jobs. 
Receive it, receive it, receive it. Help them, please. Receive it, receive it. Testimonies of jobs. Testimonies of jobs. Testimonies of jobs. Every delay in your life that has stopped you from entering where you should enter now. Makata kata tata pakata. Shekata kata kata tata tata. The anointing that came on Elijah that he guarded his loins and ran. Ma bro toto pekete. Lekete te kototata. Receive that anointing right now. I cause delay in the name of Jesus. I cause delay in the name of Jesus. Everyone who has vowed that over their dead body for you to rise and your family to rise, I declare that to their shame, my God will lift you before them. My God will lift you before them. My God will lift you before them. Everyone who says, can anything good come out of your life? I prophesy to you, in this season, God will use your life to answer them. God will use your life to answer them. I pray for you in the name that is above all names. Whoever needs to come into your life in this season. No, let's start it this way. Whoever needs to go out of your life this season. In the name of Jesus. If their presence has been causing you pain and setback, I break you free from them now. Wrong associations, be free from them now. Wrong relationships, we break it now. Wrong soul ties, we break it now. Wrong connections, we break it now. Wrong fraternities, we break it now. We break it now. We break it now. I command them out of your life. Out of your family. Listen. Some of our parents, the trouble in their life is because they have wrong friends they will never leave. They keep influencing them to make useless decisions. I pray for every family. Any stranger manipulating the destiny of any family through the counsel of Ahitophel, today we send them packing from their homes. Packing from your homes. In the name of Jesus. Until Samuel appeared, the destiny of Saul remained covered. Until Jesus appeared, 12 years of hemorrhage continued. Whoever must appear in your life, Whoever must appear, Magato Topata. You hear me talk of destiny helpers all the time. Your next level comes from God, but through the hands of a destiny helper. From the realm of the spirit, destiny helpers, I call you. From the north, from the north, from the south, from the east, from the west, wherever you are, locate God's people. Come into their lives in the name of Jesus. Every academic challenge, you have tried and done everything you know to do, but you need a miracle in the name of Jesus. I release my faith upon with you. Receive academic miracles. Now, 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 now. We activate angels to faculties, angels to departments, angels to faculties. 
faculty of art, science, environmental design, medicine, engineering, administration, education. We release them now. Miracles in the name of Jesus. That favor anointing that makes men run to look for people to bless them. I pray for you. When the favor of God came upon my fever shed, Saul looked for him and blessed him. Receive favor right now. Unusual favor. Uncommon favor. Uncommon favor. In the name of Jesus. Before I pray the last prayer point, listen, if you're here and you've not given your heart to Jesus Christ, please, I can't pray this last prayer point without making this sure because I want to pray something dangerous. If you're here, you've never given your heart to the Lord, please listen, inside and outside, or you once gave your heart to Jesus Christ, but for some reason, you see they're already coming out, follow them. You found out that you need to make your ways right, please our time is limited in one minute inside and outside you're welcome make your way to the front god bless you bless you they are coming koinonia celebrate them don't sit back don't sit back this is a family this is not all of you i believe there are still some people outside clear the way for them please clear the way god bless you sirs. bless you sirs. celebrate them jesus is calling you god bless you ma calling you to give you a new beginning Please, if they are coming, clear the way for them so that they don't become discouraged. Motivate them. Clap for them. Thank you, Jesus. Come. Run to Jesus Christ. He will give you a new beginning. If the Holy Spirit is telling you to come out, come out. Don't sit back there. Don't sit back there. Many of you are hearing the nudging of the Spirit. He's saying, why are you sitting down? Don't argue with him. Make your way hallelujah thank you so much for coming out brothers and sisters i want to lead you in a prayer of salvation it's not a poem it's not a special number it's a it's a genuine prayer of dedication god bless you hallelujah lift your right hand high to heaven and say this very passionately please you are not reciting a poem this is not an article you are praying to god this is a prayer that is going to save your soul and redeem you and empower you to be great say lord jesus i believe in you and i love you with all my heart i ask you to forgive me my sins i receive jesus christ into my heart be my lord be my savior from today my past is gone it's a new beginning i receive eternal life into my spirit the old is gone and the new has come in the name of jesus christ i pray for you right now i stretch my hands father these ones have come to make a decision for you i pray that this decision will be permanent they will never backslide no going to the world no going to the flesh i release grace upon you to live the victorious christian life in the name of jesus christ every wrong association every company of wicked and senseless people you will not have any appetite and desire to be close to them again you will love them but you will not associate with them again i receive grace for you to edit your friends wicked and unreasonable people are far from you forever in the name of jesus christ i bless you congratulations in the name of jesus it's a new beginning please follow the gentleman waving his hands and they will have your details will follow you up in the name of jesus Please lift your hands for the last prayer point. I want to pray for the gift of the Spirit to fall upon your life. This is why I said we have to pray for them. Please lift your hands. Just a quick walk in one minute. Some of you have passionately desired certain things. Some of you have had dreams but you cannot understand. God is speaking to you. There are many of you that have longed to hear the voice of God. You are praying and somehow you hear it but there is no clarity and direction. There are some of us that are trusting God for newer levels of the anointing, the gifts of the Spirit. Please lift your hands. In one minute, I'm going to pray. 
there will be a great impartation upon you all the gifts of the spirit the nine recorded in the bible and every other one that is available in god father i'm praying right now as your people shout i receive let there be mighty impartations there are people here who will carry strange fires strange grace at the count of three shout i receive one two three receive it right now right now right now right now gifts of healing impartations visions 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 prophetic encounters Kaparatata. receive it right now in the name of jesus word of knowledge word of wisdom gifts of leadership administration dreams visions entrepreneurship every gift available receive it now now please help that lady so she doesn't enjoy herself i pray for you what you could not do by the gift of the spirit go and begin to do it where you could not enter by this new anointing go and enter nothing dies in your hands in the name of Jesus. hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.